Hello. Yeah, I know. It's answering as you and me because I think we're broadcasting on both this and the Weird Lectures YouTube channel. Oh, I don't know what's happening. Hey, weirdos. Are we live? Can people see us? Can you see us? Can you see us? I don't know if I like that light on. That blue light on you? This or this. No one has still responded if they can see us or not. Your lighting looks cool as fuck. Thanks, man. I'm a pro. I know. I'm a loser. I've only been doing podcasts since 2007. You'd figure I finally bought some lights. I, I didn't How's think your day been, ghoul? <laughs> Chaotic. I can imagine. I definitely should have let you help me cut up all the entries because I... <laughs> I offered to help you cut up the entries. Wait, can you see oh, how red oh. my thumb is right there from cutting well, you off? You got all such a sore thumb. thumb. Ooh. Ooh. Well, if only you had a friend to help you who would offer to help you that you would immediately turn down. If only that friend had a car so you could drive your ass over here. I could have walked. I went on a nice walk today. I got some pita bread. I got some cigarettes. Got well, some vodka. You, I just took a shot of fireball and a shot of cold medicine, so the shit could really go down here in about 20 minutes. Cold medicine and fireball? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be I didn't want to be sniffly on the show. I've been um sick all week. Thank you, Melissa. I feel like a slug. I've got, I've got three glasses of water. I have a water and a Tito's and Red Bull. And then I have a ginger ale and vodka here. Yep. What else you and got? Then I, I have a ginger ale and vodka in the refrigerator staying cold. <laughs> Dang, I didn't do that. Pre-primed. I didn't do a ahead of time drink. And I ordered pizza and we stopped mugging for the I'm cameras. trying to figure out because I'm sitting on the couch. I don't know what way the I don't know what's happening. Looks fine. You look fine. As you always do. You look fine. Um <laughs> anyway, I ordered pizza and they called me and I was like, ooh, it's going to get here right in time before the podcast or before the live show starts. And then they called me and they said, we dropped your pizza on the floor, so we're making you a new one. So it's not there yet? No, but I appreciate that they did that. Didn't give you the dropped one? That gives me faith in the Hungry Howies over here. I love the Hungry Howies. Because most places would have just scraped it back in the box. <laughs> I know. Pizza place floors are dusty too. They're not great. No, not no great. food place floor is great. No, dust. Dust. What um listen, I had a fucking weird night. Um okay. I let the dog out and then I go to go in bed, right? And I, I wanted to do a guided meditation because I've been fucking stressed out. I've been trying to get everything in order for this show. We were on a road trip. I've been, whatever, we're always stressed. So I brush my teeth and then Toad goes in the bed. I rode my exercise bike first, watched a crime show, watched Bailey Sarian, got in the bed, stayed up for a while longer, went to sleep, listened. Well, well, no, wait. I did the guided meditation. Jesus Christ. Wait. No, I did the guided meditation. Literally had like an emotional fucking release. Like, like it told me in the guided meditation to smile, which is annoying because it was a male voice and it was telling me to smile. I'm like, this is like what I try and get away from in my regular life. I don't want to fucking hear this in a guided meditation. But anyway, so when I smiled, I immediately thought of the fucking hippos and I fucking started bawling. It like finally came out <laughs> with the emotion of what we did and what we saw and how close we were to them and how beautiful they were. It literally poured out of me. Like Toad was laying next to me. He's like, bro, she's like sobbing for no reason. And then, so I fall asleep. I get up, go in the kitchen. I left my back door completely wide open all night long. Like, I let the dog out last night, brush my teeth, never shut it in February. So my door was completely open. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, do I need medical fucking attention right now? There are two things when I'm laying in bed. If I can't sleep, if I'm like tossing and turning and just can't get comfortable. Right. Yeah, when I'm doing what Toad is doing now, when I'm you just like it. pawing, pawing at the blankets. Mm -hmm. Two things. One. I will either realize that I have a shirt on mm -hmm. and then take it off and fall asleep. Or if I don't have a shirt on, I get up and one of my doors is unlocked. 
No, I never, literally never do that. When Katie and Bex were here recently, every fucking second I was like, is the door locked? Is the door locked? Is the door locked? You know how I am? I've watched fucking Forensic Files since I was in middle school. I always lock a door. I woke up and I'm like, my whole fucking door is open, like a jar, not just unlocked, like open in February. And I didn't fucking feel it in my room. Yeah, you're nuts. I know. You're in a weird place. You had this hippo tears fucked you up. I know I cried about the hippos and left my fucking house open. Why? <laughs> Why? So I decided that after tonight, I get like a few days off of social media because I fucking can't right now. There's been too much to answer. There's been too many things to post, too many things to advertise. I, I can't. I need a break. So if y'all don't get answers to your DMs in the next three days, just I need a mental health break. Yes. And. Bobby. What is he doing back there? Just being towed? What is in there? Oh, there's a cheeto on the couch. Gross. Nope. <laughs> you can't eat this. It's hairy. <laughs> <laughs> Sherlock toad. <laughs> this, this show is starting perfect. I'll get you a fresh one. You can't have the old sick one. So, yeah, I'm, I realized today, not today, I realized three days ago, because I tweeted about it today. Yeah. But I realized that three days ago. Yeah. That this was going to be happening on the anniversary of the first time I ever went on a date with anyone or I, asked anyone out on a date. I literally can't believe that because we changed the date of this like 20 times. It's insane that it worked out that way. There's that face. There's a chicken face. Ooh, chicken panic. I know she can you know. Where is it? But yeah, the first date that I ever went on, I was at a boys and girls club dance. I was 13 and my sister was chaperoning and there was this girl I had a crush on. And my sister said, ask her to go to that movie that's opening next Friday. The movie was the breakfast club. Mm. So I walked across the dance floor and I asked her, will you want to go see the breakfast club with me on Friday? And she said, yes. And that was on... February 10th of That's 1983 insane. or whatever that was, 85, whatever. And then I said, what if secretly this girl entered our contest and she wins the date tonight? <laughs> that would be pretty crazy. <laughs> that would be like a movie. I don't Someone know. asked, oh, here, this is this whole thing right here, right? How do I remember all these things? I know, right? I don't remember. So, here, so here's, here's why I remember, because... All week long, I was so nervous about this first date to go on this date with this girl. Her name was Cindy. And I got to her house. My sister drove me to her house to pick her up. I had bought the tickets in advance to see the breakfast club. And I showed up at her house and her mom answered the door and said, she doesn't want to go on a date with you. Wow. So I went, so I, so I went to the movie theater and saw breakfast club by myself. And that's my first date memory. That's why I remember everything about it. Yo, if somebody paid to be in this contest and hose you, that's going to be really something. My, yeah, my growing up experience is such a fucking typical eighties teen movie. It's the craziest thing in the world. Can you like a 13 year old first date, Tenny? Sitting alone in a movie theater watching The Breakfast Club. <laughs> Dang, where else did? Tragic. I mean, like, what's the other one? Um, Sixteen Candles is like way more romantic than that one, anyway. Yeah, but still, come on now. Yeah. The reason that everybody thought we should date um, was because I was like the only kind of punk rock kid in my school, and she kind of looked like Cindy Lauper. Damn, yeah. Cindy, what the fuck? What the fuck, Cindy? Loser. But yeah, she had slightly shaved the side of her head like Cindy Lauper. And then like every now and then would spray color in her hair. So everyone thought that we should date. Cute. How do I get a comment off the screen when it's been up you there? You click it again. You hide it. I have to go back to it? Oh. Yeah. All right. And there you go. Look at that. Jess has got control of comments, everyone. I made it possible. Look out. Oh, oh, oh. It's about to get crazy. Someone 
ask this, and I will just say, I hope that her life has become much better than the last time I checked in on her. Yikes. Yes. Cindy's got a meth problem. No, I'm just kidding. I hope her life is better than the last time I checked in on her. Wait, Jessica does not know her. I don't know her. <laughs> She's Jessica is guessing and maybe perhaps revealing things. Jessica's a psychic. Everybody knows that already. Oh, my Wait, goodness you, gracious. Can I show you what I have our contest, ah, contest entries in? Oh, my God. What do you have all of the contest <laughs> entries in? <laughs> a fucking colander. <laughs> now, wait, show how many people, how many little slips are in there because they're gonna look at that. There's a lot. There's it's a, a really song. listen, this is a really satisfying noise, too. <laughs> listen, but I'm like, I'm gonna put them in a spaghetti strainer. I'm like, this way there are little noodles, and we have to pick I, out one noodle who is the winner. I hope that people realize the first time I tried to do this in 2008, one person entered. <laughs> Oh, we're just going to tell sad fucking stories all night long. That's the second one. It's the night of romance and romance always includes heartbreak. Who's on here? You know, what? can I tell you there's some famous people in here? What? What? There is? Yeah. Oh I my goodness drop, gracious. I just dropped somebody out. I gotta, don't make sure you don't drop nobody out. I'm not dropping anybody. I'll put it away for now though. We're not doing it yet. Oh and everybody will leave. Gracious. But I didn't even really read them all because I had to cut them so fast I wasn't reading. But I know I was gonna say someone. like, oh my pizza's at, my pizza's at my front door. Why don't you go get it? I'll talk shit about you while you're gone. Okay, talk shit about me. Cool. Hey guys, you got any personal questions about Teddy? You want me to answer? Anything? Who's gonna be the noodlehead winner? You know what? Nobody knows yet. Everybody's a noodle. I don't know yet. I don't know. I don't know. Told you why are you staring at me? Hubert Comberdale is the winner. Who is that? <laughs> I hope that's the winner's name. Can I play an instrument? I actually played the clarinet for several years. I was oh, really good too. I was like first chair. There was this fucking nerd ass who was first chair forever. And I remember the day I knocked him out of first chair and I was so fucking proud of myself. That was a real, that's a real story. <laughs> Everybody's got their nerdy secrets. I really feel like it gave me an overbite, too, in my life. You can't play the clarinet forever and not get a fucking overbite. He's got to tell us about his actual first date. Yeah. What do I got to tell people on a first date? It says he's got to tell us about his actual first date, not the sad one. I don't know if I remember my actual first date. I don't either. Uh, hold on. I have to go through the tiny filing cabinet in my brain. So... 13, I didn't ask anybody else out for an, until I was in high school. So it was about a year and a half later. That would have been, yep. The first person I asked to go on a date with me, we went to the RJ coffee shop in Royal Oak. Her name was Carmel. You went to a coffee shop with somebody who was named Carmel. I feel like that's like a coffee word. Yeah. Uh, once again, I had a kind of crew cut and an earring. And she had a crew cut and an earring. So again, people thought we should probably date. And I thought she was cute. And she thought I was cute. That was my first real date kiss. That's cute. And we dated for maybe, because it was high school, I think we dated for maybe a month and a half. I'm like really jealous of how cool your room looks right now. This is fucking shitty. Also, Carmel was one of the first women that I dated who ended up becoming a lesbian. There's been many? There have been four. Four? Four. I don't think I've dated any dudes that... I don't know. I'm not sure. Good for them if they did. They should. Yeah, I'm, not, okay. I'm not very nice. They're probably just off women after me. You are not nice. That is I'm not boyfriend. nice to boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> I get over it real easy. I'm like, this was fun for while it lasted, but let's just not do this. Anymore. That sometimes happens to me during the date. I know. I just want to leave. I just want to go to 7-Eleven and get a snacky and go home. <laughs> <laughs> I <think> we're done here. <laughs> or like you want them to leave the bar and you want to stay with your friends. Yes. That has happened many times. Where, where better people show up. <laughs> 
<laughs> was this going to happen on your date? <laughs> oh my God, we're so stupid. It's so funny, though. They're going to come to the show and we're going to be like, see you. <laughs> no, we're not. No, we're not. Oh, somebody's first date was Titanic. That's cute. Ugh. Is that cute? Yeah, you're going. We're going to go on Wednesday, I decided. <sighs> Whatever you want to do. I'm so fucking excited. I think I'm gonna put. I think I'm gonna bring Toad with us. Fuck it. You're bringing Toad to the movie theater? Why not? It's like the last show of the night. Nobody's gonna fucking be there on a Wednesday and tech up they're, for a 25 year old movie. They're gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. I will give the movie worker twenty dollars and just be like, "Turn your fucking head. You don't see nothing." Yeah. So, what other date stories do I have? I've got some good ones. So I dated this, the first real uh, love that I had, my my first true love, this girl that I dated, I was a sophomore, she was a freshman, but she was on the cheerleading squad and I was full fucking punk by this time, like blue hair, lipstick, earring, eyeliner, fully, and we were not allowed to talk at school. Like... I got beat up multiple times by the football team for talking to her in the hallway. Like we just couldn't be together at school. Mm -hmm. And so um, we, we could see each other on the walk home. She lived around the block from me. And so the first she, she asked me, we weren't dating. We were just kind of friends and holding hands, but not nothing official, nothing like that. And so she asked me, do you want to meet my parents and come pass out candy for Halloween? That's super adorable. And so I went over her house on Halloween and met her parents and we passed out candy and I gave her a band pin from the band The Alarm, if anybody even remembers The Alarm. No idea. I'm sure. Yeah, I know. But I gave her a band, a band pin from the band Alarm. And I think that was when we first kissed. And then I went home and I told her I would pick her up the next morning to walk to school. And I went and picked her up and she came to the door and said, wait a minute. And then went back inside the house and closed the front door. And I heard her mother and father screaming at her. Why was I still wearing my Halloween costume from last night? That's such a cheap shot. That's like not even creative. And her dad, for the rest of the time that we tumultuously dated called me raccoon boy because I wore eyeliner. Well, we know what that dad's like now. <laughs> I hope everyone is well. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everyone is doing well. We accept everybody, even if they're weird. We like weirdos. We like how you dress up. Just dress however you want. Be however you want. Talk however you want. Look however you want. And then, so that was one, so that would have been my second real girl that I, girlfriend that I ever had. Then my third real girlfriend, I lost my virginity to. Now why are you talking about this right now? I don't have any secrets. I don't care. This is awkward for me. <laughs> <laughs> why you haven't said anything? I know. I'm not going to talk about how I lost my fucking virginity on a YouTube show. That's for goddamn sure. Well, I mean, I don't care. It was a long time ago. I've, I've, I've found it again since then. <laughs> yeah, you did get it back. What's the official? How long do you have to wait before you get it back? <laughs> I think people used to say officially you had to wait five years. What's well, Jess's first date story? You know what? I don't remember. I probably didn't ever have a date. I was like a skater kid and I would date skater boys. So we would just show up to the fucking abandoned ass bank and skateboard and that would be my boyfriend. And then you'd like... Come on. <laughs> I mean, this is so messy when you're a kid. <laughs> People's teeth bouncing off of each other. I know. Not knowing how to kiss. Not knowing what to touch when you were supposed to touch stuff. We're not talking about touching stuff. I'm so glad that I'm past that point. Mm. I know. We don't like to hang out with anybody. We like to hang out with dogs. <laughs> and hippos. And hippos. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Fritz. Fritz was the best. Fritz. 
Was Tony still, here? Still the best. We're gonna see him again. So you don't like Tony discussing stuff with you, but you don't talk to your girlfriends about it. Okay, yeah, I talk to my friends about boys, but not on a thing, not on this. Ain't I your friends? You know every fucking stupid thing I do with boys. That is pretty true. I know. You want me to, you want me to, want me to blow some secrets out right now? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no. We talked about one on the way back from fucking... We did. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> what does Tenny like on his pizza? Uh, I mean... Nothing. I just like a plain pizza. Same Z's. Plain just cheese like only. Plain cheese only. But I gotta take lactate if it's not vegan cheese. Lactate. Okay, I'm... when's Jessica's makeup tutorial dropping? You know what? I know I gotta do a Patreon video where I show you guys how I do my makeup. I'm just gonna keep mixing these over the next while. So stoked to have a one in a thousand. I will just I will just I will I will just say without revealing any numbers. They're so tiny. That it is a better than one in 1,000. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And a lot, I feel like a lot of these people are like, wow, well, they bought, like some people bought. Too many? Some, some people bought so many that I feel like we have to send them a present if they don't win. <laughs> we have to send them, we have to send them some old town roasting. Oh, I lost do, do, do. Wait. Stop probably, doing it if you're going to oh, lose them. Somebody stuck up my chest. There we go. Stop doing it if you're going to lose them. Okay, I'm putting it back. Our drawing has to be chaos because that's our brand. I know. How much eye makeup is makeup and how much is a tattoo? I don't have any tattooed eye makeup. You can't do your own work on yourself. That's the thing. Hairdressers can't do their own hair. Tattooers can't do their own tattooer tattoos. It's fucking, that's the shittiest part. Tattooers cannot do their own tattooer. Shut up. Paper noodles. <laughs> who's going to be our first guest? I wonder who's coming. Anyway. I don't know. I mean, we're only, everybody is always afraid to be the first one. I know somebody's got to be. That's why I was just checking our Instagram DMs to make sure nobody was asking, like, hey, when do we go out? And I'm like, whenever you want. I always tell people to like wait 15 minutes in so we can have a little talky talk. Sure, that's true. Tim, Rehan, I hope you're doing good. Been on a liquid diet for two weeks. Jeez. I think the longest I went on a liquid diet is when I had that diverticulitis. Yeah, you talk about that all the time, how you got poisoned by a seed. Yeah, I got Burger King seed almost took me out for real. That's so wild because I eat so many things. I eat everything bagels all the time. Wait, I got to get myself in focus because I'm a blurry monster. I'm still blurry. Hold up a thing. Hold up like a pencil. A pencil? Does that work? Okay, now put it down. Nope, still blurry. Wait, put your face real close to the camera. And then back up. I'm still blurry. No, you're not. Still blurry. Yeah, you are now. What happens if I pop this big light on? Does that make any difference? Nope. Nope. <laughs> this is why we need new equipment. <laughs> this is why we need new equipment for sure. You're like, I got one blue light from the dollar store, and that's all you get. Why won't it focus me? That I have a really better. nice camera, too. This is ridiculous. It's getting better. It's better than it was. It's People better. Me to sit closer. I can't sit no much more closer. I think it's better now. Still blurry. Yeah, it is still blurry. Can't spend the whole time talking about my blurry camera. It's probably because you got a lot in the background and it's focusing on your background. I don't it know. should make it easier to focus on me. Can you stop yelling at me or? Shouldn't need to be cleaned. I cleaned it before we started. He cleans everything. He's Virgo. Virgo energy. I got to pee already. It's been 20 minutes. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> what if I start from way back and then come forward? Nope. Nope. 
Oh, Maybe well. it smells like your shirt and your sweater and your face all match. There you go. Ta -da, it worked. How did you do that? I don't know. I thought if it didn't see my face for a second, maybe it might change. My face is just breaking the, the camera is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Peekaboo. Peek I'm trying to think of any other nice date stories that I have. Have you told any nice ones yet? By the way, that the girl I lost my virginity to I ended up sleeping with my best friend. <laughs> like I could um, talk about my shit, but I don't really want to. It's fine. One, one time, uh, uh, this girl I was dating, her parents hated me. Um, and they had, you know, all those little white rocks that people have on their front lawn. Yeah, that was like a real like fancy parents type thing to have. I used them to spell I love you on her front lawn. Oh my god, John Cusack, where have you been? Lindbergh. <laughs> Whoa, a doggy. And dog. Little names. He's telling his depressing dating stories. <laughs> I, I obviously I came at the right time. I uh, know. Thank you. Thank God. Why was it a? De it was a depressing story. Well, that one was kind of cute, but the word the rest of them were depressing. I was talking about the my the woman I lost my virginity to slept with my best friend. I feel like I've heard this story. Well, you probably a, have. We, uh, yeah. we had many, we had many <laughs> long, long, tragic stories. <laughs> Are you going to say hi to that doggy? Who's that doggy? What's up, buddy? Who's we that? need to get these two together. Who's that? Uh oh, here comes Toad. Come here. Come here. Well, I was going to show you. Come here. He ran away. He thinks the dog is in the room with him, Chad. Probably. <laughs> he goes behind Probably. the screen and tries to find it. Wow. What's up, you guys? Hey. Nothing. What are you doing, buddy? How's it going? Happy February. Happy, Happy February. Happy uh, February. Are you just like, uh, nice where you are? It, kind of. I guess so. Yeah, it is. It is kind of nice where I'm at. Nice. You know, so, um, is it nice where you are? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> it's cold and rainy. Is it? <clears throat> that sucks. Yeah. That's not good. Okay, wait. So for people who don't know who you are, can you say some stuff about yourself or what you've done or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My name is Chad. I used to date John uh, back in 2014. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're no longer dating per, per se. I mean, we've, we've you know, but I, that's why I'm here tonight is to maybe give we've my two cents. We've moved into a deeper relationship. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I was trying to say is that we've moved way beyond dating. It's, you know. Chad, and I, have actually, Chad and I have actually scissored before. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah, we, we, we did. <laughs> we, we took the photo. We took the photo. Um... <laughs> Uh, clothes were on, you know. It was a clothes <laughs> on scissor. Yeah, um, but we did. We took. I I wish I could find that photo. I wish you could too. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you know, it's probably like on an old phone that I can't like get to anymore. You know, you could just make uh, a new one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We can. Yeah, you know, at some point it'll happen. I feel. <laughs> uh, but uh, besides dating Tenny, I um, <laughs> I uh, I've I've been in a few things. I've done a few things, and um, uh, most importantly, I just I just love uh, you guys. So that's why I'm here today. Yeah. Oh, you're always the humblest. Listen, I I want to be caught up a little because I I I'm like win a date with Tenny. I'm like what? That's that's amazing. Like I who's tried gonna, doing who's gonna win. <laughs> I tried doing this on a podcast twenty eight or in two thousand eight, and one person entered, and so I didn't do the contest. And then <laughs> Jess and I were like, we should do that contest again. And now, Jess, show him the bowl. Show him all of the. Oh entries. my gosh! Okay. Really? Yes. Look. Yes. There are so many. Look at them all. They're like snow. Are those real? Are those all people? Yes. yes. Stop it. Yeah. Stop. So, for what, like a month and a half. And so whoever wins, they have the option of either I'll fly them to me and we can go out on a date, or I'll fly to them and we'll oh, go on a date. 
Yeah, it's like a real ass contest. I love this so much. Uh, I love this so much. I, I'm, I'm invested. I can't wait to see who wins. We're all invested. And I was, I've was i been saying on the podcast and uh, on our Patreon videos and stuff, I feel like so many dudes have entered so many times. Like, I really think it's going to be a dude. And then the women. A lot, of, a lot of people just want to hang out. Yeah. I that was my question. My next question was: Was this women and men? And it appears that it's it's both. I love that. Yeah, it's anyone. Um, you can have a hangout day, go book shopping, go to the bar, go to the thrift store, whatever. Wow! And how did people enter? <laughs> how did people get their name in that bowl? They buy tickets, and the money goes back into getting us new equipment for the podcast. And um, okay. that's yeah. a beautiful and we, thing. And then we donate a portion to uh, Animal Shelter. I love that. Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh, you guys. Chad, you were magically with us when so we went last weekend to the Cincinnati Zoo and got to meet Fiona and Fritz, the hippopotamuses. Oh shit. Pretty amazing. That's a pretty big deal. But you were um you were spiritually with us because we were staying at this hotel called The Graduate and we randomly turned on the television. Ah, uh, did did something pop up? <laughs> yes. That movie, that one movie, that, that one movie was <laughs> yeah, <I guess. laughs> the Fast and the Furious. Yeah, that's amazing. It's Ooh. always on somewhere. I hired a I, dog sitter, and you came on the screen, and we're like, we know that guy. That's amazing. I was there. I, remember, I really was. You were. I I was. I tell people all the time. This has nothing to do with that movie, but one of my favorite ways of meeting someone that I've met someone in my life was the genius of putting you and me in a hotel near nothing together so that we had <laughs> so that we had to bond <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere really nowhere yeah <laughs> where like you know the one thing to do was to go get lost in the woods behind the uh, the place where we were staying and wasn't uh, there like a big atomic power plant near us or something that you could see out the window i think so i want to say that was like our first time I, that wasn't that near uh, penhurst yeah. 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 That's where we fell in love. And then it was. Um, we fell in love at a Ruby Tuesdays date. We did. Speaking of dates, I mean, <laughs> whoever wins this should suggest a Ruby Tuesday. Um, do you have a Ruby, a Ruby Tuesdays near you? I don't. I think they may all be closed now, Chad. Oh, my God. I think I think we have outlived Ruby Tuesday. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what was this uh, pandemic? Did the pandemic. Uh, I think it was just because it was Ruby Tuesdays. That was it. People are like, we're, we're done. We don't need this anymore. We don't need it anymore. <laughs> we don't need Ruby Tuesdays anymore. Um, and also, I, I want to point out, you tweeted something the other day about somebody was, uh, you know, every once in a while we'll get some ghost stalker love. And um, somebody was saying uh, something and you tweeted back and said, oh, yeah, we were hammering some things out. Don't think that I didn't pay attention to the word hammering. Because there was a time when, during the shoot, when Tanny woke I up. This, I tell this story, but go ahead and tell it so, yeah. so people he know woke I'm not up and he said, Yeah, because we would always share, like, because the, the experiences that we had were so intense. And we would always get up the next morning and be like, I had a dream about this. I had a dream about that. And Tanny goes, I just want you to know that I had a dream uh, last night where I found a hammer. And I think it was either I killed you with it or I tried to kill you with it. Yeah. It was, I think I tried to kill you with it. And then we were, I believe, I want to say Holmesburg. Maybe was it was Holmesburg Holmes Prison. Yeah. And we were down uh, going through the walkthrough. And then <laughs> I hear John go, hey, Chad. And I look over and he's got a hammer in his hand. And he's just staring at me. <laughs> I was a good moment. It, obviously, he didn't end up trying to kill me. But um, I wish you that saved me on that been. episode. Yeah. Yeah, the hammer. So you saved, but you saved me on that episode. That was that was one of the craziest times ever. People don't realize. You know what people? You know what's really crazy to me, Chad, is that you, no other show has ever gone back there. Really? Never. That was an intense place, man. That was a scary place. I mean, do you remember how the warden Jessica did not want to be there? No. Damn. No. No. He was clearly wigged out. Um, and I was a, that was the whole experience that one, I mean, the whole thing was an experience, but like that particular episode, cause I remember that day we were sitting in the RV 
and we were joking about the um the uh what the the, the fucking oh the uh, life alert yes thank you the the panic button we were joking about it because we said it was probably going to be me and we laughed we had a good laugh about that and then later that night it was on and something tried to take you down and you were pressing it but it wasn't it wasn't working it wasn't, it wasn't getting to you <laughs> it wasn't working yeah i wish i wish the ed, um, obviously you got to like fit in so much in an episode but i wish it would have shown like me and you sitting outside of the of the jail and literally i tell people this story all the time like there was a point when your eyes were re- literally rolling in your head you yeah. know yeah no, I tell people all the time, and I, again, there's no way that you and I will ever have access to all of the stuff that we filmed. Right. But, like, we had this great fucking conversation. We found a giant, like, space antenna outside of a place. Do you remember we pulled up, and there was, like, a fence that said NASA, and we oh, pulled yeah. the RV up and got out and talked about fucking aliens and shit for, like, an hour, and none of that made it, of course. No, like, no. That was never in. Yeah, or, and like, nobody approached us. But and the one scene that got cut that I always tell people about was at Whispers the night after you came out, you walked out and walked down the street into an open church service. Yeah. yeah. And had and yeah, a priest yeah. bless you. Yeah, that was the next morning, actually. I think you 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 found me on the steps, you came over and I was I was bawling. Yeah. And you said you said something to me very profound in the moment. You said something, we all come out crying. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? You, you said something to the fact that, like, we all enter this world crying. Yeah. And, um, yeah, again, like, the level of, like, profound experiences that we had. Because people see the show, and it's funny, and it's exciting, and they love the pairing. And- also, yeah, and they also don't see us, like, outside the hotel. Like, you and I would go outside the hotels after we were done, or if we had night, and we would smudge each other. Yeah, like- smudge each other. We'd smoke. You know yeah. what I mean? You'd have your cigarettes, I'd have a joint, and we'd literally yeah. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but those were the times, man. <laughs> I know. You know. That was the good stuff, man. That was good stuff. I learned so much about myself and life and everything. And that and that short amount of time, which seemed like, you know. Yeah. Jessica gets uncomfortable when I talk about stuff like this, but I, I will just, I have you because you're a, a marker on a milestone at points yeah. in my life. So I will tell you this. So Chad will realize, Chad, when did we film Ghost Stalkers? I, I want to say it was 2014, right? Right. Do you remember I was, ta- do you remember I would talk very commonly about a girl that I was kind of seeing then? Yes. That? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Jess gets uh, uncomfortable when I say stuff like this because she doesn't think I should say live things on YouTube. That was the yeah. last time I slept with someone. That was the last time. Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. Okay, I didn't know it was that. You said you throw. I'm coming up on a decade. Listen, you throw around the number five years. I didn't know it was ten. But I, I, but these are the, but these, but these are the tenny facts that I'm into. These are like I love you know what I mean. It's like let me tell you something. I, uh, you and <laughs> Jessica's faces both when it started to like climb into your mind that it's been ten years was amazing. <laughs> Not where I expected you to go with it either. I'm like, oh, he's going to tell a ghost doctor story. Uh, uh, so how do you guys pick a winner? Oh, uh, it's a very it's scientific gonna... method of me pulling a name out of a spaghetti strainer. So we're not ready yet, though. It's coming. Wow. And and then really when thinking. do you announce? Like at the end of this uh, of the of the stream? We were thinking around nine o'clock. Man, I'm invested. I really want to know who wins. This is this the craziest thing, Chad. Yeah. I'm like a date with Tenny. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Like a whole and, thing. And, and folks, like, I will I will attest to that. Like, I I jump at every opportunity I get to like hang out with, with Tenny. And I'm getting to hang out with Jessica finally. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. getting like to say hi to it, you. It needs to be in person. Yeah. I know it. We need to come I know. Later, I know. It has to be in person. The thing um, is, is Jess needs a good California trip. I know. Uh, yeah. Well, 
you and know you're somebody the person there. to make that happen. I am. I am. I live like very close to Universal Studios. Uh, she wants to walk the, the graveyards. I do. Ooh, yeah. And I got to go to Queen Mary still. You've never been to the Queen Mary yet? Mm-mm. Are they reopening that? Mm-hmm. It's open. They are. Wow. I, uh, I, I did an event with Aiden just before or after that thing shut down. Mm-hmm. And I got to say, like, walking around that ship... Right when the pandemic hit, too, and nobody was around, was was eerie, man. You know, it's yeah. a cool. It's, it's. I mean, that place is legendary. John, you've been there. You've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. was in the notorious, most haunted room, and I was doing a EVP session with a group of people, and we were all obviously being very quiet because we were doing an EVP session. And some YouTubers, we could hear them outside going like, "This is the most haunted room in the Queen Mary." <laughs> got a ghost inside and they didn't know we were in it and so i walked up to the door i like walked the door and then just whipped it open and i was like what's going on and they screamed and ran down the hallway and i thought i just made some youtube kid like a million dollars that's amazing (laughs) that's incredible that's incredible uh i've done something similar i i was there with a friend years ago and we there was a group of uh it was an actual tour from the queen (laughs) it was a legit tour they had in there and we walked by and we're like, okay, get ready to run. She banged on the door, and then we took off running. That was a pretty good. <laughs> when know. I was there, when I was there, I, because you know I like old timey stuff, so I had on my tablet I had some 1930s radio playing, and I was taking a shower, and the maid came in while I was in the shower. And just like stood in the bathroom. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this is bizarre. And so I was like, well, I'll just, I'll just pull open the curtain and like give her a show. Like if she's going to stand there and I whipped the curtain open and nobody was there. And then the front, the door to the room slammed. Really? So you, it was like someone heard the music of that era and like came into the room. Wow. So you legit thought it was like. Amazing. I thought it was a person. Wow. Yeah, it was wow. crazy. Wow. Like you heard like like it was, like it walk up to you. Yeah, I heard the door like, open and then the door to the bathroom opened and damn. then I could see them silhouetted in the in the shower curtain. It was Oh my god. Insane. That's bananas. But I also think that has something to do with you. You know, we've, like, we've, we've had that conversation. Too. Yeah, I just it's that doesn't surprise me at all. Like, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> hey, listen, man, if I was a ghost or if I was in that world or whatever that means, I would want to come see you. I'd be like this guy. This well, guy, you know, you know, I think you came and saw yourself. So I think so. I think I mean, are we ever going to go back? I mean, are we get, I, I think we have to go back at some point. I think we talk to ourselves way more often than we think we are. I agree. I agree. And that's, you know, out of all of the theories from that, I still land on that was probably me. But you had, after Ghost Talkers, you had a bunch of weird shit happening in your fucking apartment. Or you I had, had a lot of weird shit. I had a lot of weird shit. You uh, had creepy crawlers, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. I think I will. Yeah. Because we talked about it. I had an imp. I, I'm pretty sure, or, you know, and I was, it was right after I got home and then it was like, I was all of a sudden, you know, seeing a bunch of, but yeah, that thing was in my apartment. And I remember that. I remember catching that thing on the back of the couch and it got, it was a black mass and it got bigger and it got bigger and then it came behind me and it picked up my shirt and then I hopped onto the couch and hopped onto the floor and scurried away. I mean, Crazy. What can you say about that shit? <laughs> well, you know, you know, Chad, none of that's real. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. What it have you been me... doing lately? Oh, uh, what have I been doing lately, man? Um I see you like all over the fucking country doing events and stuff. Yeah. I usually when the events pick up, I do a lot of car shows and and um yeah. Just, just busy, you know, with with events. I'm hoping to do something with you guys at some point soon. I don't know. Um, yeah. I'll other get her than that, Cal- just take, what's that? I'll get her California, and we should do an event together. Yeah, let's do it. 
Let's do it. There's a lot of good places out here. Not as good as like, you know, whispers and stuff like that, but like, you know, have you seen so here's so here's the thing, right, with Ghost Stalkers for so people who haven't watched Ghost Stalkers was a show Chad and I did in 2014, obviously, and then you can watch it. I think it's available everywhere that's streaming, right? Like Yeah, on Amazon, I think. I think. But what's crazy is so like no one's ever gone back to Holmesburg. No, that's nuts. No show has ever done whispers again. No. No. The Maryland State Hospital has been torn down. That's right. Old Taylor Memorial Hospital has been torn down. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Okay. What was the, the other only, one that got torn down? The, the, the Maryland, Maryland the, the double The W building? That got torn down. That's gone. That was notorious. Yeah, that was a crazy laugh in there. Yeah, that's when I heard the woman, and then I went upstairs and I heard the man, and then I was yeah. like, "I made that face." Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah that reason. was. It was shocking. It was absolutely shocking. Damn, that place was. That place was amazing. Yeah. So the only two places that exist from our show are Ferrar and Wheatlands. Wheatlands. Wow. Have you been been back to Ferrar? I have. I've been What's that like? Um, it that place is still very bizarre and weird. Wicked. Do you remember that mo- Ferrar told us to fuck off when we drove away? <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Because uh, I used to at the end after we episode when we drive away, I would go fuck that place. That's and right. You, you and I on the last day of Ferrar, <laughs> not on camera, we did an EVP session in the basement That's of right. Ferrar. And That's the, only right. res- the only response we got was fuck off. <laughs> That's right. Oh my gosh. That's right. Cause you would tell every place to fuck off every time we left. <laughs> yes. Since we got in the van, you know, I remember you telling fuck off Mitchell, Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Again, the good times. <laughs> the good times. <laughs> Oh man, uh, you guys are awesome, man! And thanks for having me on tonight. I I hope no, other people are, on. are coming on to hang out. There's uh, other people coming all oh. the time. Speak of the, you know, there it is. Look at that. <laughs> Hi, Tammy. Hi. You're so Hi, how are you? <laughs> this is what happens, Chad. People just come on whenever. Yeah. Just come hang out. We have yeah. no control. We have no control. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tammy, tell everybody what you do. What if you have, mom. wait a second, but Chad, if you have to go or if you have, if you want to stay, it's up to you. Whatever you want. Oh, to I'll, I'll stay. I wanted yeah. to give every so, other people a, a chance to hang out, but I'll, I'll hang out a bit. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Hey guys. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Great. We're doing good. Tammy, that's, that's Chad. Chad, that's Tammy. Hi, Tammy. Hi. We met very briefly at the, uh, it was very briefly, at the Perry Unity in Vegas. Like, uh, I think oh, it was a year okay. ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like your one <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah your I remember. On. Was, I think it was a pink robe. Yeah, it was a pink robe or was mm-hmm. something like that, but you were comfortable yeah. and I was jealous. <laughs> yes, it was, the, it was the infamous pink robe that I have. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nice to see you, too. How's everybody doing? Does everybody have their cocktail in hand? Yeah. <laughs> I have to go and get another one in a second, but I have Drinking water. Right and Red Bull. Oh. Oh, wow. Chad, Chad and John, uh, I was telling uh, Jessica this, but in uh, in May, I'll be traveling to Louisville to go and see you guys, of course, John and Jessica, uh, for the Waverly Hills uh, investigation with Strange Escapes. But I'll also be traveling to Mitchell, Indiana to <laughs> visit the Whispers Estate. So wow. I know that you guys had investigated this location. Oh my God, for the show, uh, it was Spirit Chasers, right? You were there. Ghost, um, ghost Talkers. So, yeah, Ghost Talkers. So, so just, enough. Um, it was a long time yes, ago. right? Yeah, so exactly. Close. You're talking to us or chasing them. So there you go. But, but yeah, I'll be um, going over there to investigate and talk to the new owner, Richard uh, Barr, and see what's see what's there but i don't know if you guys have um anything you wish to tell me and before setting foot in that location i know jessica's going to join me with toad as well <laughs> for the little well, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you i'll tell you tammy uh now that it has new owners and stuff when we first went there there was a woman who lived there who hated oh. me. 
Yeah, Gwen. Gwen. Oh, you, you, yeah, I forgot her name. Yeah. Yeah, Gwen. She was living in. It was like kind of like a, a living closet almost. Yeah, she was living in a closet. Yeah. Almost. Yeah, and she, I, I would say she really got off on whatever was going on in there. I mean, really got off, like, on and it. She tried, and, she tried to curse me. Yeah, she did. She told them, she told the house to basically do whatever the fuck they wanted to you. She took a liking to me, you know, but it was like, it was a weird thing. That place is fucking weird. <laughs> it's super weird. That's what I that was seeing. Mm -hmm. I think that was Chad's. I think that was your like, um, like your what? your first real bat encounter, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's when I opened it and I, the, the bat was circling in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Proving no, you were bat. I think uh, yeah. My my big profound moment was whispers. Yours was Holmesburg. Um, I think you know, but it, that that uh, whispers is it's so unassuming too because it's just like this house. In the middle of the neighborhood, you never would know it, but you go inside and you start feeling this rocking sort of like motion and the house just starts to work on you. I don't think you work on it. I think it starts to work on you. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's the best way to describe it because I'll never forget. And then John got majorly scratched and pushed in that place. Yeah. I mean, yeah. have you ever seen a scratch on yourself to the likes of that since then? No, that was the biggest scratch and push that I've ever gotten. And I mean, it was crazy because, you know, typically when people on investigations, they get scratched, there's always like three scratch marks. Yeah. This was like a single scratch that started right. at the top of my neck and went down below like my belt oh, line. Like right. It went all the way down my spine. It was crazy. And it shoved <laughs> me against the floor when it Yeah. Did. Yeah. Yeah. That place is so nuts. So I read yeah. that it's like... Supposedly, there's a negative entity that, that people are like, no, it's demonic. And then there's other entities. I think there's a total of, from what I've read, there's different numbers. Um, it's the internet. Uh, there's seven, eight, nine, <laughs> twenty. Because apparently now there's also a portal in the basement. You know, comes uh, we with must it. have missed that. We have <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how, you think we? Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's the internet, and, and you know how, like, you know, the, the, the paranormal YouTubers go in there, and they're like, whoa, and they're like, there's a demon in here, and I think there's five others in the basement, and there's this portal, and then this cabin is haunted, so I'm like, what's going on? And another video is like, no, I didn't feel anything, I think I felt like a ghost kid, and that's it, but, um, yeah, I think it's whatever you bring and to the house, or whatever the house wants to allegedly, about. also allegedly a goat man. Goat man. <laughs> yes oh my god one of my one of my favorite moments on ghost stalkers when chad goes what the fuck is a goat man <laughs> that sounds about right that sounds about right I, so, I, so say, much. I i think uh i think that house is entirely a character in itself i don't feel like there's any like separate like i feel like it's all sort of like working together to like i don't know it's like a big creepy crawly thing in itself, the whole place. Yeah, it's yeah. it's an amalgamation of a lot of things, but it it's one thing that has is combinatorial. Like it's it's a system of things, but it's one the house is one thing. Oh wow. But why do you why do you think that is, John? Like what the fuck is that place? Like yeah. honestly. Like, no. I mean, I, I mean, I talk about this a lot in lectures, but I think this happens with a lot of locations. Like people hear so many stories about these locations and so many people conjure up what's going to be there. The house doesn't know what it's supposed to be. So it starts drawing from all of us. And then before you know it, like it's this thing that just wants to be something and it doesn't know what it's supposed to be when you go in and you're like, oh, I think there's something evil in here. It hears you and it manifests that way. If you go in and you think it's something nice, like it acts like something nice. If you act like it's a person, it's just responsive as a person. I think it's just trying to be something. Right. Yeah. Like if you look at us as human beings, like we're always just trying to do that. Right. We're just trying to be noticed yeah. and we're just trying to be like ourselves and be accepted for ourselves but if you didn't know what you were sometimes that could be pretty frustrating pretty right. energetic you know that's true do you yeah, know when, who, uh, do you know who currently owns the the house have you been in contact with the new owners since then? No, no i haven't so the yeah. gentleman's name is uh 
Richard Barr or Professor Barr. So he is a psychologist professor at the University of Indiana, and he runs a parapsychology course wow. in that university. So now the house is used as part of his lab to bring his students to conduct experiments and to come up with their own theories and hypotheses of parapsychology and paranormal phenomenon. So it's really That's cool. Amazing. How what he now has used the house for, he still opens it up to investigations to other teams. And um, I know that when I get there with Jess, uh, I think around 6.30 or 7, another team from New Orleans is driving in, and they're going to investigate too. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's been trying to keep up with the house, and I think he's doing really good things with it as opposed to that owner. <laughs> owner that had it before. So, yeah, he is. it's really cool because he is a man of science. And he's an open-minded skeptic, but he doesn't feed into the narrative of demon, evil, right. all of that stuff. So, yeah. Well, that was one of the things when we first investigated there, because Whispers had been like a Halloween attraction. Yeah. And so before true. we went before we went there, we like checked the walls for like speakers in the walls and stuff like that to make sure that no one was fucking with us. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I also remember that Whispers for me as a, person who investigates shows on television was one of the places I appreciated because it had indoor plumbing so I could go to the bathroom when we because <laughs> you want to talk about that for a second you want to talk about that fucking bathroom for a second okay I hopefully it's changed but I'm glad you brought that up because John had no problem using the restrooms at these places I could not do it I could not do it at all and especially at whispers because that motherfucking bathroom <laughs> You go in, right, and literally you look off to the left and the fucking you see the, the open door going down <laughs> into the basement. There's no there's no door. It was like you're literally like sitting there like, oh, my God. And I had I had the crew drive me off. I'm like, I can't use the bathroom here. And I had them drive me off before I filmed the episode. I'm like, I can't do it. It's the yeah. luck of being luck of being in punk rock bands when I was growing up and just learning to go to the bathroom anywhere. Anywhere but, outside, dig a hole. But this place is truly like yeah, I mean the, the, the basement is literally looking at you. Yeah. Yes. Right. Anyway. I read a lot about the basement. There's a the, what is it, a supposed uh, supposed vortex there uh, that a lot of people claim. Uh who knows? Well, I, yeah. I, the, the, I remember it was so funny because when we were there, first of all, people had a lot of problems with me on Ghost Stalkers because I wore a tie. But like I still at Whispers, because people wanted everybody to be wearing black t-shirts and jeans, right? Like that's, they yeah. wanted people to be wearing the Ghost Hunter, the Ghost Adventure shirt. kind of, yeah, uniform. Shark tooth necklace, yeah. This but people were, people were so <laughs> shocked. Like our camera crew was so shocked when I would, like there was the first day we were there when the camera crew was with us in the house. And I was like, I'm going to crawl under this house. And everybody was like in a tie. And I was like, yeah, why not? Fuck it. <laughs> like I grew up in Detroit. I'll crawl in a fucking dirty building underneath. I don't care. And you did. And yeah. you did. Yeah. The tie. Uh, John has style. John always like had his like a uh, trench coat, his tie, his like button up shirt, his child. I mean, yeah, John served. And then it was so cool because, like, Chad was so eccentric. Chad is himself in his own right. And it was just, like, night and day with your styles and how you approached everything, which was so cool and unique about that show. It was I a really good show. Great. I wish they brought, I, brought it back. I, yeah, that was the one thing. I, I think, um, I, looking back, it probably didn't, it probably didn't go on because John and I would have definitely been killed <laughs> eventually. Oh, <yeah. laughs> you know what I mean, John? Like, honestly, I don't know what that would have done to like my psyche going seven, eight seasons, doing something like that. As much as it would have been a ride, I think okay. it would have been detrimental to us. Not only that, Chad, but like literally like we filmed that show with zero. I mean, even though that show is filled with screams and fear, like, we went down in those steam tunnels in Maryland that no one was supposed to go down into. We were walking around in buildings that had no floors. Like we weren't wearing masks in case there was black mold, like no. nothing. No. no, no. I mean, literally like crawling around in basements. I remember crawling around in the Holmesburg basement and I got lost in this circular, circular, I don't know. It was in a basement and I had to remember which color 
because there were like eight or nine doors, tunnels that I could have gone through. And I had to remember which color I went through to get back. And I remember thinking, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. This is, this is not cool, <laughs> but I did it and it was exhilarating, but like, yeah, you're right. Like, and you went to the top of Holmesburg and like <laughs> called out from the guard tower for us. It was yeah, awesome. I did a Rocky. I did a Rocky shout at the, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good times. You guys need to do another season. Just do it. Do a crowdfunding. It would be, something it would be so, so much funny. different. It would be so much different now. It would be. It would be. <laughs> it would be. I'd be curious to see if the two of us do something like that again and what the energy would be like this time, you know, because obviously we're, you know. Yeah. You know, especially me. <laughs> you're a, you're a <laughs> war torn investigator. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going back, you hear? Um, well, you guys didn't want to do portals, right? That was not your idea. No. no. Right. No, not no. at all. That was a Destination America uh, idea all the way. And they were they were serious about it. And I remember one note, John, um, and you remember this note. Uh, they wanted us to actually put John and I walk through a portal. Yeah. And John said, if Chad and I walked through a portal, we would be dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, we'll be dead. We'll, we'll, we'll be gone. Uh, yeah. No, that was not that was not our, our doing. Do you remember, Chad? This is a really crazy thing that I think Jessica just found about found out about Tammy. Um, when we first when we were fe- seeing the first cuts, do you remember that our ghost stalkers was narrated by like a guy with a southern drawl? No. It was narrated no. by who? It was narrated by just like some guy with a southern drawl. He was like, John and Chad are headed toward <laughs> the Hamburg prison. I think I vaguely remember that. I have that cut, and it's so weird. <laughs> oh, my God. It's that just is so random. I have to hear it. I have to hear it. Some, some <laughs> random guy. My God. I couldn't get a dude from that did the voice of Optimus Prime instead. <laughs> that would have been cool. I tell you though, but you know, doing doing the voiceovers for that was probably the least favorite of my experience. I know John's too. Like we would have to like stay home and like you know take three or four hours and like do like you know pages of like dialogue and send it off. But like I didn't have really a setup. I know you didn't really have a setup, and we were like on our phones, and it's just like ah Christ. And I think you have outtakes still that are fucking amazing. I do. I have. I have. I have on YouTube, I did this thing. It's like six minutes of outtakes, but I literally have hours upon hours of, of outtakes because it was just so bad. <sighs> the memories. <laughs> oh, yeah. Give Toad a GoPro. Dog <laughs> investigation. I'm, I'm surprised that no <laughs> one has done a dog investigation show yet. He got one. We're, if we're working on it. You guys should. Toad. We, should start, we should do a spec for him. We should do a spec with him at Whispers. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, help me. You can help me with the GoPro that I got. Yeah. Get Chad's dog, get Toad, get Amy's cat. Yeah. Like, just to have a whole animal investigative team. Yeah. There you go. See what they come up with, you know? Yeah. Tammy, See what they come up with. What you're, about your podcast and all the stuff you do. Oh, yeah. So I have a podcast called Hollywood Paranormal, and we just pretty much cover a lot of places here that not a lot of people have heard about in Hollywood in Los Angeles. And um, I've been doing that since 2017, and I've been wanting to do more than just lip service. I wanted to go out and do some more research and went out there and started talking to historians and people and producers, and it just kind of snowballed, and here I am talking to you guys. So, um, yeah, just seeing where my journey takes me pretty much with this podcast and um, where I can pers- continue to go with it and, and see. But I've already started some projects with travel and um, they're funny. Uh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> see where the road goes. But these paranormal shows are pretty interesting how they start casting you and start uh, interviewing you and what they want to do and the narrative that they want to follow and you just kind of have to stick your guns and yeah. just, yeah. Because yeah. everything in now is, it, it is, it's all demonic, it's evil. Um, every time I get asked to interview some for something, it's like, well, it was a demonic, was it evil, was it a negative? I'm like, no, it wasn't. It's not all like that. 
So, you know. I don't. I don't think most people would know what that is or feels like truly, you know what I mean? Like, I can't say that I know, you know what I mean? Like, come on, you know, like, how are we going to just rush to the demon thing or the evil thing? I don't fucking know. Well, on the episode of ghost stalkers where you ask what the fuck is a goat man, they had, me, <laughs> they, they, the, the network wanted me to do an explanation of goat men. And so I did this like three minute voiceover explaining the history of like, hooved men and pan and goats and their relationship right. mysticism and magic and all of the stuff and the only part of that three minute like breakdown of historical goat men through and the mysticism behind goat men the only part they used is i said a line that was um in more recent days oh goat men have been associated with satan and that's the only clip that they used out of the entire three minutes. <laughs> of course. Yes. Yeah. So none of the history mattered. None of the none of that mattered. They just needed that sticking point. <laughs> no, he's saying he said it. He said it. <laughs> Cut it, edit it, and roll it. Yep. That's what they want. That's they look for. I mean, again, when you talk about editing with portals, there's that one, there's one episode, Chad, of Ghost Stalkers where they, we say the word portals. The episode is 44 minutes long and we say the, the word portals 36 times in four oh, It's painful. <sighs> but it was a thing, right? Like we were kind of told and implied, like you have to hit these points and talk about these things. And so, yeah, like obviously we're shooting a show and I'm going to, say that shit and <laughs> imply it like okay we're looking for pork. but goddamn yeah yep yeah yeah oh jessica oh hi <laughs> what's up hi. Hi. hi i love you guys oh we love oh, you. <laughs> you you guys are good to us how's it going good how you doing Great. Great. should we just call you the adams family yeah, that's about sure. right. <laughs> Chad, Tammy, this is the Adams family. They make films and amazing hi. films and amazing soundtracks. Oh, hi. Hi. They made awesome. our favorite horror movie of 2022, Hellbender. If Aww, you saw Hellbender. Oh, very cool. Oh, really? That's so neat. <laughs> that's and so my cool. most especially my oh, most sorry, listened, I was gonna say, and my most listened to soundtrack. All right. We're working on some new music right now, so it's super, super fun. We, I was just, uh, just right before we left, Toby was finishing some food, and I was finishing some beats. So we're super excited. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's really fun. Because you have a new film, right, coming? Well, yeah, we have. Um, we do. We, we, we have two, two. In, the, two yeah. in the can, but one was just announced yesterday. With yeah. the films, and we're really, really excited about that one to get it out there yeah the announcement yesterday was that to like for somebody to buy it i don't i don't understand the lingo we don't understand it either <laughs> 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 yeah no i mean what it is is um we we like to do our movies independently by ourselves and yeah. um that means that when you're done with them you have to get a distributor to buy them so yeah the answer to your question is is now um, distributors look get to look at it and um, hopefully enjoy it and hopefully buy it and then hopefully like we'll be on Shutter again or like we love Shutter so we're hoping they'll love it. Really good. Yeah, they're so supportive of like good ass projects. They are. Where are all of you? We're me and Tenny are in Detroit. Tammy's in LA. Chad's in LA. Right. Yep. Yeah, where awesome. you guys at? Upstate New York, but we lived in LA for a while. We lived in Topanga. Oh yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the most notorious places for UFO sightings. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I, <laughs> probably a good reason for that. <laughs> I think a few aliens have like a set set base there. Actually. There's a lot there's, of weird stuff there. Yeah, there's literally been like dozens upon dozens of books written about Topanga. Wow. Yeah. What, what yeah. is it about Topanga that really attracts the aliens? <laughs> I mean, the I, think, acid. I think it would be accepted there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I would. <laughs> place, right? 
Mm -hmm. That's true. Oh yeah, um, Pat oh, Oswald cool. has been very nice. He's a supportive guy. I know he loves you guys. He is so cool. We were we what we want him. We, we want to do a movie with him. You know, yeah. that would be so awesome. That would be wild. The film he he did he was in last year. Um, I'm you're not not you're not. I'm getting confused now with you're not my mother. Uh, but it was father. Uh, you're not like not my father. Father, did, did you guys see that? It's a great film. Mm -hmm. Really, really great. Oh, is How that the one where he poses as like his son, like someone, uh, like a girlfriend on the line, where yes. he, yeah. where he's trying to communicate with his son, and he poses as a woman online, kind of dating this. It was weird, but it was a good movie. The storyline was great, but it was kind of odd and ick yeah. in some parts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Um, thank you, CJ. <laughs> um, when so here's my thing. Did you with Hellbender? Did you guys film in upstate New York? Yeah, um, we film all our movies up here. Uh, it's a great community. It's super rural. Uh, we got the support of locals. Like if we want a cop, we get the sheriff. If we want a store, we get the store owner. If we want to whatever everyone's a pretty game they kind of know us and so we love filming in our community um we got a great rural community that's just i don't know it's kind of where we're from too so it helps uh but it was also in the like the beginning at the top of the pandemic when we were shooting so we also went um on the road with zelda because our older girl lulu who plays amber in, in hellbender she was already, she just graduated from college, so she was off doing her own thing. So John and I and our daughters just took off. Um, and so some of it, especially the trippy, the trippy scenes in Hellbender, we shot like in the Northwest or in the desert or, um, you know, just taken into some crazy place with mud pools and witchy vibes. Oh, no. I feel like Lulu in the movie was so freaking cute. Like she is who, like you instantly want to be friends with her. She's so nice, so cool, just like so genuinely cool. I'm like she's so accepting. Izzy comes along and she's like a little nerd. Yeah, <laughs> like oh, our Amber. She's like, oh, I'll hang out with this girl, and then Izzy gets weird, but she tries. You know. That is Lulu. Lulu's just this, she's a wild one. She's been a wild one since day one and you want to be in her wild bunch. Yeah. <laughs> I totally get that. Your kids seriously seem so nice and like they would be the kids in class who would talk to the new kid. Like they seem so genuinely nice, like such rad people. Oh, thank you. thank you. We love them like crazy. They're, they're great friends. You can what? tell. Where can I check out the movie? Shutter. Yeah. Okay. Shutter. All right. I have yet to really discover Shutter, so now I sh I should get into it. It's you know, it's it's also on the usual places like iTunes and Amazon cool. and um all the all those typical places. It's, it's such a kick-ass movie, Chad, and I I think you'll super dig the soundtrack. That was my next question is because I I was in bands my whole life. Like, were you two were your family musical like? Or is that just something that occurred? Well, I've been I've been like a punk rock changed my life, and I've love always, it. And yeah, um, you know, uh, I mean, basically, Adam's family is kind of um, modeled after SST Records. You know, oh, it's like uh, you know, the SST Records found me when I was a teenager in upstate New York. They were from California, you know, so they they weren't on a major label. It changed my life. So um, punk rock's always been a big part of my life. And, and then as the kids grew up, uh, I was in bands with them. And then, and then finally, we all just came together as a, as a final band. And so now it's the four of us together. That's so awesome. Yeah. 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 SS, because uh, I'm from Michigan. So like really big here, it was SST and Touch and Go Records. Touch and Go was great with the Meat Men. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And so then, like that, that saved my life too. Yeah, I mean, it's it's music is really wonderful, and um, it's a great way for us to communicate with our kids. Like we were working on a song today, Toby and I, and, and then we're waiting for the two kids to sing on it. And it's uh, 
any art, I guess, is a great way to communicate as a family. Yeah, for yeah. sure. John, what are you on a, on a book right now? What was that? Are you working on any any books or, or researching anything right now? Uh, I always am kind of doing something. I'm trying to organize for book wise that I've been working on for like three years is in Michigan, starting right before the pandemic, Michigan was getting all of these sightings of weird creatures. And when I say weird creatures, I mean like people were seeing um, a pair of legs. This is how they would describe it. Like a pair of legs with an aquarium on top of it with lights <laughs> inside, with lights inside of the aquarium and then multiple people saw a like three foot by three foot square box covered with tinsel that could move through trees and cars as it floated through the neighborhood. That's trippy. So I'm writing a book about these weird creature sightings in Michigan. An aquarium with legs? What was that, Chad? An, aqu an aquarium with legs? Yeah, just two human legs, but then a glass, long, an elongated glass aquarium that looked like it had been filled with LED lights. And they watched it walk down the street, and then, in, like, they thought it had turned the corner, but it had just disappeared because there was no corner for it to turn when they looked in the morning. Yeah. That's Venice Beach at 3 p.m., so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a new one. I mean, this is a new one for sure. There was a ton. It happened for like two years and then lockdown happened. And then I couldn't go to places to interview people anymore. But Michigan, I've, I've said mo pretty recently in lectures. So like the Great Lakes, we have discovered that there's what's called a humongous fungus underneath the lakes, which is this hundreds of miles wide mycelium network underneath the Great Lakes. And if you look at like Wisconsin, Northern Michigan, and then over into the East Coast, like if you look at all of the weird stories that they share, I have this idea that maybe we're all microdosed, like, oh and we're God. having these weird hallucinatory <laughs> experiences. I'm into the mushrooms, and they're having their moment right now, you know, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I, I can, I can go on on the a fungus tangent for long <laughs> on my mycelium fungus ta tangent <laughs> for sure i mean if you look at like the little creatures that you have on the east coast like puckwudgies and stuff like that and then you bring it across into michigan and we have like bigfoot and dogman and then in wisconsin they have dogman sightings like there's just this <laughs> cacophony of weird creatures that's up here and i think it has something to do with the giant mushroom that's underneath us all <laughs> Wasn't there a huge UFO phenomenon that happened in Michigan too, like years ago? Like yeah, we had the largest UFO, the largest UFO sighting in American history in 1966. It was uh, five thousand yeah. people over the course of a week, all saw flying saucers, and the government said it was swamp gas. Oh my god! Huh. So if you ever hear anybody talking about swamp gas as UFOs, they're talking about Michigan. Uh. <laughs> I was wondering too. Are you yes, guys? take over because I have to go to the bathroom. You go, go. I know I had to dip out before too, but I was wondering if you guys are practicing witches or were you before or are you now? Like I feel like Hellbender had some serious insights into witchcraft in it. It wasn't fake. I'm like they know some shit. No. <laughs> I <laughs> notice it. Notice it. Says no. No, I'm, 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 so, I'm not, so you know but, she is. But I, I probably, I mean, if I probably really, you know, kind of go into it, I, I, I just, I think I'm probably naturally, you know, turned towards that. I just don't know anything. So a lot of what Hellbender was based upon was just, was just kind of gut instincts for all of us. You know, we kind of just reached into our most um, primitive imaginations to come up with a lot of the mythology of Hellbender. Um, so no, that's, that's the answer. But the, the, the answer also is, look, magic is, um, life is magic. We're talking together, the four of us, the five of us, and it's fucking magic because I'll yeah. tell you what, I couldn't explain how this happened. Yeah. <laughs> it and there's so much magic going around and that's, what's fun about Hellbender is undiscovered magic. Like, yeah, it's, we all know that there's magic out there. There's magic in the mushrooms that we were talking about just a second ago. Yeah. There's magic. There's magic in the sunset. There's there's so much magic. And what we wanted to explore with Hellbender is 
all that hidden magic. Like, yeah. and the fact that these two women knew how to utilize it and ride it. And it was built into their DNA. And so basically, <laughs> ultimately, it really is an ex magic is an extension of all of our DNA. Um, we are yeah. magic. This is magic. Yeah. And 100%. the more we kind of not look like worship the magic, but the more we um, enjoy the magic and celebrate the magic, the more powerful it is. Yeah, me and Tenny talk about this all the time, how there's just natural witches and whether you know you're doing something or not, there's like little rituals you have, little stuff you put outside, little stuff you do, little you feed the animals outside and then something good happens to you. It's all connected. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I talk about in my lectures a lot too, like little kids are a perfect gateway into seeing natural magic because little kids are doing magic all the time. Like they, right. they talk to trees, they talk to animals, the animals talk back to them. They can clench their fists and make the wind blow. Like they do amazing magical things. And we've just yeah. forgotten that that's a part of our world. You know? So agree with that. I always like to think about movies, making movies kind of like making mud pies because, you know, kids can make something out of nothing. You know, like if they just have a stick and a wad of gum, they can, you know, entertain themselves for hours. Um, yeah. I think yeah, the I of magic is like trying to think that you can manipulate it. Like, I, I feel like that's when it gets dangerous. I feel like if you allow the magic to manipulate you, that's magic. But when, at least in my mind, it's when people start to th think that they're controlling the magic, that's when I think it gets a little tricky. Like, yeah, it's yeah. As, not very like, real. Yeah, the way that I've always thought about it and the way I talk to it about people is, like, there's this kind of magical force of the world that's looking to play, right? It wants you to engage with it. It wants you to play with it. It's looking for a play partner. And when I say play, I, I don't mean in the sense like adults, we get caught up. We want to play to win. But when you're a little kid, you just play to play. You don't play to win. You just do crazy stuff. Correct. <laughs> I am down with that. <laughs> hey, Jessica, because I want to ask questions to all of you, but um, tell me something about you. Oh, gosh. Um, I tattoo people's faces for a living. Um, I do cosmetic tattooing, brows and freckles on people. So I talk about it, too, as like a magic ritual. I'm like, these people are trusting me with the like most important thing in their life, their face. Um, and there's blood spilled and there's conversations and there's tears and it's wild by the end. And then I change your whole appearance and then they leave happy and it's, it's a blast. Wow. That's, that's cool. really amazing. I would imagine that you know some things about people that nobody else knows about them. I imagine oh. when they sit in front of you that they just start to feel it. Yeah. From their mouth, just from that, position, that, that position of uh, vulnerability and intimacy. Yeah, it's like you're definitely like a psychiatrist. I've heard about crimes. I've heard about family drama. I've heard about people cheating with people at their work. You name it, they've told me. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I love my job, though. I, I forget, too, because I do all this stuff. I, I do the podcast. I do We do paranormal events. I'm a road tripper. I'm constantly moving. But when I... I go to my job. I'm like, I'm so lucky that these people trust me with this stuff. And it's really nice. And, and you really do. Like you change people's lives. Like Jessica and I've had this conversation before where people have a birthmark that they don't like, or if they have a surgery and on their breasts, like she can help fix part of them. Like, and that's a magical to help yeah. someone transform in that way. Yeah. We just we have a friend um, who has um, what's it lapisha? What's the name of it when you lose alopecia? alopecia. Yeah. And she just got her eyebrows done, and they look fucking great. Yeah, yeah. that's what I do. It's that's so stressful too. I feel like I'm doing heart surgery. It's so <laughs> stressful because one wrong move and somebody looks real yeah. weird. Well, that's such a uh, intimate place too. Like. Uh, the face, you know what I mean? That's like, a, that's a whole nother statement. I think it's like, you yeah. know, is there a certain kind of person that wants to get there? Like what I, I cause I can never do that. Uh, but I, I, I'm just like, how does that, what's the craziest thing that you've ever put on somebody? 
Good question. I mean, I won't do anything too crazy. I wouldn't do anything that would disrupt their life. Um, I had a girl recently, she has like a big red birthmark between like her lip and her nose. And I covered it with like skin tone ink and now she doesn't have it anymore. Like, that's, like wow. Oh, wow. Um, cool. And you, all ages. The other thing is too, is Jess created this thing called Astro Fricks, which she never talks about, which is <laughs> like subtly hiding people's birth constellations on them. Like just, they, you would never even recognize that they're there or hiding them in the freckles on your face. Yeah, you know, I just think it's super amazing. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah, so that is fun. Really cool. um, who was the, who was the first person that you like, like you said, getting a tattoo on your face. That's intense. So who's the first person you did a tattoo on their face? Oh God. I think the very first person I did was my little sister. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, no. Um, she was nice enough to let me try. And then, um, this girl came in one day and she was like, Can you do a few freckles on my nose? I'm like, Yeah. And then I, I the night before, I had been walking. You know how you have your best ideas when you're either walking your dog or when you're in the shower, right? <laughs> so I yeah. had been walking my dog. I thought of the, the constellation freckle thing. And she asked me for regular freckles and I'm like, can I do this thing that I thought of last night? And she's like, I'm not really into astrology at all, but you oh can do it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um, so I did it and I put it online and literally the next day, uh, Hello Giggles reached out and then Cosmo Australia reached out and then it just kept going and going. That's amazing. Like, How did this happen so fast? It happened so fast. Because you were doing something you love. That's magic, right? When you're exactly. doing something you love. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. But it's, it's that's how I first learned about you, Jessica. That's how I read that article and had a hello giggles about you. <laughs> oh my God. That's so weird. Mm -hmm. Tammy, now it's, it's your turn. What can you tell me about yourself? Well, um, I have a podcast called Hollywood Paranormal, and I'm also a paranormal investigator, but we have something in common, too. I used to work in film. I worked primarily in horror, and the last film I actually designed costumes for, I'm a costume designer, uh, was this sh uh, film called Alaska. And it hasn't been out yet, um, but it's about a girl who moves to Los Angeles, and she needs, uh, she meets this man who has a lot of money, and she is a struggling actress, but she has problems falling asleep, so she becomes a test subject for this new job at the sleep clinic. And she's able to go into, somehow into her dreams, into her REM, and um, relive her dreams and her nightmares. And she comes out with something like a sleep paralysis demon. So um, that is still in production. That's still in, in post, I think. And then the one before that, I did the costumes for um, the Mortuary Collection with Jacob Alordi and Clancy Brown, which is also on Shutter as well. Because they're freaking cool. amazing. And that, <laughs> that one took seven years. That one, that's, talk about a passion project. It was me and my friends from grad school from Florida State Film School. And um, we were on LA and we're like, let's do a, let's do a pitch. Let's do a 10 minute movie called The Babysitter Murders. So we rented a house in Adam Street, this old, actually haunted house. <laughs> it had a ghost in it. We had some activity happen during production. And um, and we did it. And we pitched it in a festival. And we got people from, from Netflix, these former executives from Netflix that wanted to produce it. And in 2018, it came, it finally came out. Finally did. But, um, but yeah, like, yeah, when it comes to horror, it's it's so interesting. I mean, you guys can agree. It's so hard to pitch because people still don't under, understand it. Movie executives do not understand, like, the horror, like, market. They don't understand that genre. It's it's oh, pretty yeah. difficult to navigate. Yeah, you guys, you guys know. <laughs> so um, Shudder was so great, great in taking care of us and... And I think they're going to turn it into a series. I'm not sure, based on the mortuary collection. That's really cool. I I loved it. That's so neat. That's that's really really cool. Yeah, I, I love horror, but I hate it when I have to wardrobe it because of the amount of blood. And when you were talking about the moles and hellbender, I'm like, I remember that scene. I'm like, oh my god, how many extras? <laughs> 
how many hero uh, costumes did they have to have? So I, I get it. But I love it. I just love. I love getting that mm, that shot, that perfect shot. Yeah. Well, super cool. And what about um, you, Mr. Lindbergh? <laughs> uh, I was trying to uh, put in the plug there because my phone's. If if I leave accidentally, my my phone is um near the end. But uh, uh, I know I know John. We did a show together way back when, um, investigating getting ghosts and whatnot. I also act as well, and um, yeah. That's Chad, you always, un so Chad, you always undercut yourself. Give your. I give, know. Chad give. was in the Fast and the Furious. He was in the X Files. He was in fucking City of Angels. He was, I was in, in a few things. Angel. I've been in a few things. I've been in a few things. Um, and something soon, John, is going to drop that that I think you're going to be super excited about. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. Why don't you did tell you? Us? Did you finish? Did that Fast and the Furious documentaries start airing? Yeah, yeah, it's out. It's a docu series about the entire franchise, and I narrate the entire thing. Oh my god, cool. that's great! Oh, that's yeah, cool. it's on Vice TV. Um, but yeah, um, what else? Wait, Chad, tell me, did you work? You worked with Giovanni Ribisi, right? Yeah, and Sneaky Pete. Oh my god, I love him. And Sneaky Pete, and I, I approached him and I said, yo, man, like, people have been mistaking me for you for years. <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, it's my terrible Giovanni impression. I mean, he, um, uh, he goes, yeah, it's uh, he he gets it in return. People come up to him all the time, say, aren't you the guy from the Fast and the Furious? It's oh, like, my no. God. You know, because he was in Gone in 60, 60 seconds. So, yeah. But ever since he did the X-Files years ago, they would be like, oh, you're the lightning guy. I'm like, yeah. no. That's one of the best episodes. Yeah. Yeah. He's great. He's a great actor. He's fabulous. He's the Chad, actor. don't Did you, you... meet Nicolas Cage? Huh? Did you meet Nicolas Cage? No. That was a oh. bummer. I, on City of Angels, I was like, a you know, a small part. And I got to work with Meg Ryan. But Nick Cage, the only memory I have of Nick Cage was he was in his getup and his, like, you know, black outfit, looking badass. And he got off the elevator and he walked by, by me. And I was like, man, that guy has presence. Like that guy's got like <laughs> something going on. You know what I mean? Like, who is that? You know, I, I'm, I've been a Nick Cage fan for years, but unfortunately I never got to shake his hand or meet him. Cause he's like, he's legendary. Man. The guy. <laughs> yeah. I know. Chad, you went from one of the things that I tell people all the time that I think is super funny is you went from Ghost Stalkers to you did an episode of Major Crimes, Major Crimes, which starred the other John Tenney. Yes. Yes. So that is a that is a strange little like uh, signpost in our relationship because we were you guys were we were going to premiere Ghost Stalkers in New York and I was scheduled to be out there. And I mean, like. Oh my God, I didn't want to miss it for the world. But then I got cast in an episode of Major Crimes. It was a big guest star. And the director uh, of that episode was named John Tenney, who is one of your distant relatives, right? Well, all the Tennies are related, yeah. Sure, right. So I, and I remember in the audition, after I was done doing it, I go, I have to ask you, <laughs> does anybody ever like confuse you with anybody? He's like, well, now that you mention it, you know, people think I'm like this paranormal guy. And I'm like, that's funny. So <laughs> I ended up getting cast and I was not able to go to the premiere, but I was working with another John Tenney at that time, which was kind of funny. Well, it was the silliest because I people always think that I was married to Terry Hatcher and that's, <laughs> that, that's him. And so I, I at least I'm a little bit happy that people sometimes confuse him for me. Because well, he was still on a the reboot of Sex in the City too, and there was a bunch of uh, articles about him being on Sex in the City, and then people were tagging you. I'm like, Teddy's not on Sex in the City. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. But the best thing is, is when we had that premiere in New York, Chad. We stayed at uh, I can't remember the name of the place that the hotel I stayed at, but he ended up staying there like a year later. Did he? And for some reason. To this day, whenever he goes there, and he's gone there multiple times over the past 10 years, 
they email me his bar receipt. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's incredible. And he's a super nice guy. He's really a great guy. Yeah, what's he drink? Single malt? Yeah, what's he drink? Yeah, I'm very curious. Uh, he drinks a lot. He drinks a lot of scotch. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and on multiple and on multiple this is some I'm looking out on some gossip and on multiple occasions has taken the hotel robe. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You, you yeah, no, I know that uh, they charge you for that shit. Uh, that's good. Man. That's great. That's good stuff. Oh my gosh. I'm going to go back to raving about Hellbender for a minute, you guys, if I could just have a moment. Um, I wanted to say, too, as someone who like struggles with their relationship with their mom, your relationship with Izzy Zelda in real life, just the way you guys interact and you like, the, one of the opening scenes where you're sitting on the steps and you went to the little shop in town and got the crown and all that. And you're just like sitting with each other and the way she touches your face. Mm -hmm. I'm like, anybody would be so jealous of this, like mother daughter, like oh, relationship okay. right now. And that's again, a, I'm getting the glimpse. That's um, a nice that's, touch. That that it's so, so thoughtful. It's, it is you. a sweet touch. I remember I edited when I edited that scene, I was like, look at how much she loves her mom. I know. It's so cool. That's it's so sweet. You can like feel it. And it's so it's, natural. It's funny because, you know, there's, as the movie goes on, she's supposed to get a little more, you know, offensive to her mother. But, you know, that was the part where Zelda actually had to act because we, we'd be like, Zelda, you got to be a little bit more like, you know, you're, you know, you got to be a little more. She'd be like, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny because she doesn't like these two don't fight or have any of that. And so, it was fun to it was fun to watch them do it acting wise. Yeah. I feel lucky. I mean, both my both our daughters are our friends, you know, they're just wonderful people. Um, I mean, they don't even call us mom and dad most of the time. Yeah. They're just like Toby, John. I mean, they know we're their parents, but they're just like, but they just like to call us what everyone else calls us. It's too. funny because they've always called us John and Toby. And um, you don't know how many, I love the, like people are always like, why does she call you John? And I'm like, cause that's my fucking name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, they're like, Oh my God. My but, friends, but, my punk rock friends, when they would come over would freak out. Cause I called my mom, Nancy and my dad, John. And they would always be like, you call your parents by their fucking names? And I was like, yeah, it's their fucking names. What, what, what am I supposed to call? Right, right. I never did that. I can never yeah, do that. Well, I didn't I either, did either. But our goal was always to like be equals and have our, our kids be our friends. And a lot of people say you can't be a parent or you have to be either a parent or a friend. And I say, that's bullshit. And I also say yeah. that if I have to pick one, I'll be a friend. Yeah. Yeah, I think that actually, that was something that hit me with Hellbender too was i mean i'm not spoiling the end but i will just say like the end is amazing to me because it's like okay i'm still your mom right like <laughs> like it's perfect oh, thanks. oh thank you thank you yeah we think it might be fun to have a you know a, a sequel where they kind of go off and uh well at, at least izzy gets to go kind of tour the world you know chomping on a few roadies and be happy if she's allowed to play bass you know string along you know chewing through the music business <laughs> did yeah. you uh did you have to seek out someone to press the soundtrack or like how did that work no they sought us out actually just on instagram um we're we're pretty like we 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 enjoy talking with people so all of our business is kind of just done by talking to people and that that was another thing and um they were just nice they approached us we talked to them for a little while they were nice and they put out our album yeah it's amazing it's gorgeous yeah. too thank you. thank you thank you that's so cool yeah that was fun um that was a great experience and it still is people first of all when they approached us they said hey can we put out your album it was like does people buy the albums like uh mm -hmm. why would you want to do that and then um <laughs> it turns out that people do buy albums and it's it's and there's more albums for sale than ever and it's really cool and we're glad we're a part of it it was really lucky yeah when jess told me she's like you got to get the soundtrack and i went i told jess will confirm this i was like it's sold out everywhere i go is sold out and then she found me a place that still had some and i bought it but it, it is really amazing to think like 
I worked at a record store throughout the 80s, so that's where I got all my punk rock music from. But it's crazy to think that, like, vinyl went away. Yeah. Like, it's always, for me, to be able to hold something in your hand, like something physical like that, and to drop the needle on it and, like, listen to, like, actual sound. There's just something so amazing to me about it. Like, that's another kind of magic, too. Uh, yeah. Totally. And then, but also you bring up punk rock, which first I got to know who's your favorite punk band. You got to call one now. I got to call one now. Do I have to call, can I call like, you want me to call like a major punk rock band or no, like a local punk rock band? Your brain. Let's hear it. I know. I want to know yours too. You want to know mine too? Well, I want to know theirs. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, so if I went local, I would go with negative approach. Who's from oh, Detroit. Great. I love Same. negative approach. Totally. And crazy enough like being in detroit and being in punk rock like being able to know john brannan and like being able to know like people in those bands really formed that but if i have to go like a major punk rock band um it's probably the dead kennedys okay i like both of those dead kennedys are the circle jerks one of the two yeah they're, they're the circle jerks were so cool like the angry samoans were the ones that changed like that, that was the first punk song i heard uh you stupid jerk you know that song right yeah and it's 30 seconds long everyone in high school was listening to you know had long hair and listening to like journey and toto and shit you know boston I, yeah boston. <laughs> i was gonna just i just wanted to just dislocate my head from my body <laughs> and you stupid jerk got played by this kid who came from north carolina and he played me this song and i was like <laughs> Oh, yes. I was so happy. I went and saw Black Flag and then everything changed from that point. Yeah, out. yeah. We, we, um, my sister is five years older than me. So she snuck me into some shows when I was underage. And I just saw people with that looked every single person I saw was different. And I was like, this is where I want to live. Yeah. Like, this is everybody. I don't, no one looks like anyone else. This is amazing. And then I formed my first punk band. I think I was 14. And in Detroit, you would just show up with your equipment at the one punk rock place and they would let you play because you had your equipment with you. That's and cool. so like our first show we played with, uh, there was a, a band on Touch and Go called L7. That was our first, we played with L7 and Reagan Youth was our first oh show. Oh my God. God, you played with Reagan Youth in the 80s? Yeah, yeah. That's great. We played I mean, with Social no, Distortion in the 80s. I mean, You're a go nowhere. <laughs> go nowhere. <laughs> yeah. You're not even there. They were Reagan Youth was so mad at us because my band's name was Degeneration and they had a song called Degenerate and they thought we had stolen they thought we had stolen our name from their song and I was like whatever whatever okay. you're from New York and you just bullies <laughs> well that that guy has a, you know a very sad tale you know where that oh is. yeah for sure yeah in yeah. all in the era of like crime podcasts and okay. no one has no one has touched that story is very strange. Oh, wow. That is strange. Yeah, geez. That's just a heart wrencher and a brutal one. And I think he's gone now. Yeah, he yeah, he passed away. Right. Our second show, no one, I'm glad that someone is like excited about these stupid random things from my past. Our second show was with SNFU. Oh my God, SNFU. One, two, SNFU. Now that's so guy, good. Yeah, what a performer. <laughs> one of the greatest performers ever, really. You know. Yeah. Just in yeah, case. he. Oh, wait, what was your band's name? Degeneration, but oh, we were the. But we were the full spelling of degeneration. There was also a hair metal band that was yeah. like D hyphen generation. Right. That, and so sometimes we would get booked at metal clubs, and then like we would show up and do a song called Reagan is a hippie, and like get booed off stage. Yes, <laughs> that's great. That's that's a high compliment. Can can I find your stuff? Can I find degeneration? Uh, uh yeah. I think on Discogs, like our seven inch shows up every now right. and then on dis on Discogs. And okay. then later I was in a like heavy metal grunge band in the 90s called Smokehouse, and that that seven inch shows up a lot too. Great. I can't wait to hear it. It's I'm telling you right now, it's not as good as the soundtrack to Hell Better. <laughs> oh well, I don't know about that. But I I do. Trust okay. me. I okay. Well, Please. what's fun about, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jessica. No, you go. I'll go after. No, I was just saying what's fun about the generations of music and, and growing up with my kids is that they're, they bring so much music to us now. You know, it's like, and I love 
Um, I think one of the big mistakes, at least my generation makes, is they say, oh, music isn't any good anymore, and blah, 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 and all this kind of horse shit. And I love um, the wonderful music that my kids find. You know, there's so much music out there. And there now these days, the ability, technology helps us all so that we, like lots of people can record music. When, when as you know, when we were young, you had to have, you know, $500 to go into the studio. Oh yeah. Yeah. Our first seven inch for degeneration, it was $50 an hour in the studio. And I think we recorded the whole thing in three hours, which 150 bucks in 1985 was a lot of money. Yes, it was. And then, and then we saved all our money from shows for like two years because to press 507 inches cost like two grand. Yeah. And that was just crazy money in 1988. Right. It was. Yeah. You had to sell a lot of crack to do that. <laughs> Guys, I have to go, but it was a pleasure meeting you all. Well, Bye, Tammy. Tammy. Thanks, thanks for joining. For Peace, Tammy. Thank nice talking with you. Nice I'll, to meet you. I'll talk to you guys soon. I want to get you guys in my podcast. All of you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Pleasure, guys. Take care. Bye. 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 Um, John, I was going to say... There's a short on y'all's IMDb t page that I can't watch anywhere. Where is the short? Oh. Ever? Is it called Ever? I don't know. Hang on. I don't know if it's yours or y'all were just in it. Oh, we oh. were just in it. We were just yeah. in it. Right. That's, yeah. That'll probably be available soon because we shot that only. That's only. That is only been out like. We just acted in it. Yeah. Yeah. We acted in it. I want to see that. Yeah, they were sweethearts working with them. It was great. We we did that out in Pasadena. Out in L.A., out yeah. Out in L.A., yeah. Nice. And really nice quickly. Well, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Jess. No, I was going to ask what the newer – well, you have two new ones because y'all were in Serbia, right? Yes. Yeah. And that's a wow. different one. So yeah. <laughs> we got – the one that we just finished that's kind of like – that that is all done and kind of going is called Where the Devil Roams. Yeah. What does that say about where the devil roams, Laura? Where the devil roams is about a family of uh, sideshow performers in Depression era America, and the, they're just roaming around uh, the dusty, dying carnival circuit. Um, and uh, when something bad <coughs> happens to uh, the parents, John and Zelda and I uh, are are the family. Uh, it's up to the daughter to pick up the pieces, literally. Um, we kind of call it a cross between Bonnie and Clyde, Frankenstein, and the Grapes of Wrath. Oh, awesome. Amazing. Very cool. And uh, we just loved making making this film, and we kind of can't wait to uh, to get it out there. I, I think it's different from any of our other films, and, and we just had a, had a blast. Is it, uh, is it 30s, 40s, or earlier? Yeah, early 30s. Awesome. Yeah, it was so fun. First of all, the 30s are, you know, uh, gorgeous. You know, you look at, we, we went through 30s pictures and what a great era. You know, what yeah, a great yeah. era. They got great style. They have great cars. They have great crime. They have great, just everything about the 30s was really interesting. Plus socially, you know, it's like a really sad, but but also kind of blossoming time because they just went through the, the depression. So everyone was starting at the bottom. And um, a lot of things were shaken out. So were they dancing like this? I feel like they were <laughs> dancing like this. Yes, they were. <laughs> yeah. I, listen, I'll tell everybody right now. One of the one of the this is a John thing. I'm That's sorry. I love, <laughs> I love old films, but I tell people all the time, like if. Even if you don't like, I'm, I'm not a big musicals fan, but there's a film that's called The Gold Diggers of 1933. And people should watch it solely for Ginger Rogers. She mm. sings We're in the Money, but she oh, sings right. it in she sings it in pig Latin. Huh. And it's the most mind-blowing thing that you will ever see on oh, films. Yeah. Someone doing something real on camera, like it's not a trick. Like she's gonna sing this song in pig Latin, and it's just un, uh, uh, mind blowing. That's cool. Wow. I'll check it out. Me too. I'm writing it down. I love that era. The only time uh, I ever went to a years and years ago, I went to someone who was doing past life regressions and they told me that I was a, a Polish uh, accountant in my last life who jumped out <laughs> of a window during the great depression. 
<laughs> did you live? You just had me. I, I did not live, but I came back as me. So I, I lived in, in some way. <laughs> That's great. And hey. I'm Polish, so that kind of makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> thank you guys for having me tonight. I want to dip out tonight. And thank yeah, you guys. This Chad, was awesome. So much. Nice to meet you guys. Jessica, John, I love you so much. I love you thank too, Chad. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This was nice. I needed this today. Um, and also, good luck to whoever wins the date. Yes, right. the win the date with John Tenney. No, Chad, do you have anything you want to promote? Oh, yeah. Or what should people watch or do? Uh, if they want to watch Icons Unearthed, Fast and Furious, that's on Vice TV every Monday right now. Uh, and I'm sure they're replaying it six episodes. And then I am I am very, very close to, to being able to announce something that I've been sitting on for a year and a half. NDAs were signed, the whole nine. So I'll be able to announce that so very soon. So very soon. I'm afraid to say anything because it'll give it away, so I don't want to. But I understand ah, you did that. It's one of you those, did, but it's a good one. Be, you did that before. You, there, I have a text message somewhere where you said, "I can't say anything but Banderas." Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> you did. Wait. You did. You did that film, didn't you? Do a film with Antonio Banderas? Yeah, uh, I've done a couple, but I, I, I think the one I did <laughs> was in in uh, Security. It's called Security. Security. Yeah, and we shot that in Bulgaria. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ah, oh, yes, Antonio. Hey, yes. Yeah. Well, thank you, Chad, for being here with us. I love you guys, man. And I'm going to check out Hell, uh, Hell Bender, right? Yes. Yep. Nice awesome. meeting you, Chad. It's the first one on my list now. Good I'll see you guys later, man. Cheers. Good love you. Great night. Good night. Yay. What a nice guy. I know. He's, He's the best. So He's so crazy too. He goes on TikTok and does crazy shit and dances and sings and shit. He's crazy. When I first when I first met him, when we got together to do this paranormal reality show, we sat for like a day learning about each other. The the producer of the show booked us rooms in a hotel like 40 miles away from anything so that we were the only two people that we could interact with. We had to bond really fast, which I thought was a great idea kind of. And it was like the fourth day that we were there. This is again, this is 10 years ago, but like the fourth day we were there, he was like, Oh, and I was in the fast and the furious movies. And I was like, how do you not lead with that? And he's <laughs> like, was, well, you know, talk about it. Yeah. No, he's the humblest, nicest person. Everybody we know is so humble. That's important. I know. Yeah. It's good. Okay, so there's another thing that I found funny. I'm just going to keep gassing you guys up and keep talking about Hellbender because I can't help it. Um, go in the bathroom again. Go ahead. When you, okay, when John comes in in Hellbender, you're like a punk rock dude. You guys are like rock and roll, cool family. I feel like when you come in in that movie, you're such a like dad guy in the woods. Like, <laughs> you're so funny. I'm like, that's not him. He's being such a nerd. I loved being that guy. It's <laughs> funny that everybody who knows me is always like, who did you bring to that scene? Who is that? Yeah, no who's ever that, seen guy? that guy? I've never seen that guy. We haven't seen him since. Yeah, since no. he showed up. And then he, we had to dust him. Yep, he showed up. He got <laughs> dusted, know. and we've never seen him since. That I know. Kid. He's like, he looks like he got lost on the way to Whole Foods. Like, who is this guy? <laughs> He is so funny. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun day. That was a, that that waterfall. That whole area is um, just actually about two miles from where we're sitting right now. Wow. And that was a fun day. It was a beautiful day, and um, yeah, you know, in most of the movies, most of our movies, I'm always very mean, and yeah. so I was like, I want to be nice. I want to be like nice, and so I tried yeah. to be nice for this movie, and it was fun. I enjoyed it. It was cool. You and were people, nice. People get a kick out of it. Yeah, it didn't work out for you. No. That, <laughs> that um, what you were just talking about, that area is why I asked if you filmed in upstate New York, because it looked a lot like northern Michigan. Yes. Yeah. We we camped out on um, the other side. Well, we actually went to Michigan. We loved Michigan. What was the name of that town that we, we went so went much? To a, um, we were in a film festival in South Haven? Does that sound right? South Haven, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep. But um, then we also camped up on Lake Superior for a while. That's I know that's not, but that whole area up there, just that, all the Great Lakes are gorgeous, and they are very similar in terrain.
to the cat skills. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. I also, John, uh, pretend to be like this grumpy old man <laughs> because I know Jess knows this from like whenever I'm shot on television, it's always this like stoic paranormal researcher. Mm-hmm. And then people meet me in person and they're like, you're this fucking weird, like goofy punk rock guy. Who the fuck yeah. is on television all the time? It's like, it's just how I'm shot. And I like to pretend to be that person sometimes because it's not me. That's fun. It's performance. Performance is fun. Yeah. I mean, what's always great about performing is that like kind of happy, kind of airheaded guy. Like it's great. I really enjoy it. <laughs> but I want to say, Toby and I were just talking about that. I do enjoy being like playing an asshole. It's so fun nice yeah like there is there is a point in when jess and i are doing podcasts where i purposefully act like an asshole to get reactions from her and i love it (laughs) and i know that sometimes she hates it (laughs) well just it's not me like an asshole then (laughs) oh i know i'm sure i do (laughs) (laughs) we know every single thing about each other so when we do a dig it's like that wasn't a fake dig that was a real one there you go. Everybody knows it was a real one. <laughs> How did you meet? Oh, gosh. Uh, we met through a mutual friend at a bar, and I uh, had read her friend's poem. And so her friend said, you should read Jessica's poem. And I looked at her poem, and I said, your dog is going to die. Worst poem reading ever. And my and dog Jess, was like and a Jess was like, fuck this guy. I hate this guy. And that's how the best friendships start, right? <laughs> like, I'm never going to talk. No, he didn't die. He lived to be 14. <laughs> and her dog lived to be 14 and didn't die because I told her that her dog was going to die. And so she started paying more attention to her dog. That's what I think. I think at the time when he did that, I lived in a home that didn't have a fenced in yard. And accidents could have happened. And I think him making me like hyper aware of like something's going to happen made me maybe, you know, not make it happen. But well, whenever we fly, I always say, and I always say, and the girls hate it. I'm always like, boy, I hope our plane doesn't crash today as we're getting on. They're always like, Dad, it's not I'm like, no, you have to say it. You That's how funny it is. I'm not like that. I have to say it. And then, you know, look, I'm talking to you. We just flew back to Serbia. I know. <laughs> How long was that flight? Oh, not nine too bad. Ish, nine, nine and a half hours. No, but we flew okay. from if we flew from Serbia to Vienna, and then from Vienna to I think it'd be twelve hours if you did the the if if it was direct. Right. Okay. And then I've seen uh, yeah. you guys do like one or two maybe comic or horror cons or like screenings are you gonna do more horror cons or do you have any interest in that i know you're busy as shit so you probably don't have time but we're going to like our first kind of like con i mean uh crypticon in seattle uh in may okay yeah no we love festivals and we love conventions too like horror hound like yeah this is something that a lot of the reasons why we enjoy making movies so much is what we're talking to you right now it's like It's meeting kind of like-minded people, enjoying similar art or different art, but being able to talk with people that are fun and enjoyable. And that's what, you know, especially the horror community gives to us. Like, it's a great, I don't know, it's a great community. It is. It is. I know we're going to Horror Hound Cincinnati. That's in March. I don't know if you guys are going to do any ones later in the year. Probably late. Like we, we can't do horror. We can't do that horror hound because we're locked down. We love horror hound. They're yeah. terrific. Um, terrific people. It's a terrific party. It's like, uh, I love their movies. I love their convention. Um, so, and Cincinnati, I like the Cincinnati one quite a bit. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I did their Indianapolis convention a couple of times and loved it. Ah, okay, cool. Um, but yeah, we're uh, hopefully, you know, where the devil roams will we'll be doing the festival circuit basically from summer through through winter. Yeah, and it's it's a great it's great also um, because you get to learn a lot about your own movie. Um, you know, you make a movie, you think you know what you've done. A lot of the time you don't. <laughs> 
And it's, <laughs> it's nice to learn what you've done. You know, it's and, true. Often we don't really figure out our, our films until a year later when we're actually talking about them. We're like, oh, um, that's what it's about. So, yeah. <laughs> I have a I have a weird question since this is since Jess and I and probably Jess we're, we're at nine so we should pick my winner pretty soon. Okay. But since we're picking a date for me on this episode, uh, mm. I don't know if you want to answer this question. How did you guys meet? Yeah. Mm. Oh, we met in New York City at Irving Plaza to see a mutual friend's brother's band. What you met at a show? I was walking up the steps. I just bought my ticket. I was with a friend of mine. And I'm going up the steps, and I don't know why I turned around, and I saw Toby walk in, and I said, wow, look at her. And he's <laughs> and my friend. And I'm not kidding. I can remember it like, boom, plain as day. And, and he's like, I know her. And I was like, oh my God, really? And he's like, you want me to introduce you? And I was like, no, 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 no. I don't, please don't. And, um, but he did. And I failed because I'm very bad Aww. socially. But I'm very bad too. I did that night. And so it was a, it was a very eventful night. I failed. I got arrested. And, um, and then I don't know why she even went, but he, the, my friend, asked her to come see my band play and she came to see my band play and um then things went a little better <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah he was so awkward and, <laughs> and, 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 you know, this was a case of i really did not where you should not read a book by its cover and because oh. i just looked at john and i was like ah you know um i i'm just he's not going to be my type but then i knew shit. Because when I saw him at his gig and I got to really kind of see him in his, you know, kind of true, you know, he was on stage and he was funny and charming. And um, and then we talked and and then I I, I was like, God, I, I'm glad that I went to his show because <laughs> I would have totally blown it. <laughs> but when I, when I really there's there's one vision like there's a lot of visions, but one vision when I really knew, oh, I really love this lady was um we were hiking i i loved going hiking in utah and so i was like you want to go hiking in utah and she was like yeah and so we were hiking down a river called the escalant where you kind of hike in for like five days and you can hike in one and and you it's like big long five-day hike and i was walking down the river i had my backpack the river was up to here and i turn around and i see toby behind me walking through the river and I remember it just struck me like, man, I really love this lady. Yeah. This is, is going to be great. <laughs> and it turns out like right after I looked, she grabbed onto a piece of wood, but it was a snake. And so no! <laughs> right after I said, I love this lady. The, the next move was like, ah! <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it was great. So we did it that a lot. Crazy. Yep, lots of adventures. God, that's cute. That's Wait, so what funny. did you get arrested for? The chat wants to know why you got arrested. Oh, actually, it's so silly. Um, <laughs> so I had just quit drinking at the at the time. Like I quit. I was. I've I've gone in and out of having drug problems in my life, and and this was one of the times when I was not trying to not have a, any kind of problems. <laughs> and so that night, I was drinking club sodas nonstop, and uh, I was nervous because I was because I had met her and. So I left the club. It was like two in the morning. I'm walking down the street and there was a construction zone. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I got to piss so oh. bad. I'm not going to make it home. I'll just go into the construction zone, and take a quick one. And so I took a quick one, got out, flagged a cab, got in the cab, drove a block, and a NYPD did a Starsky and Hutch move in front of the cab. Oh. Woo! And I'm like, wow, this, this cab driver... Like, he's really fucked up. Like, I can't believe this cop did a Starsky and Hutch move in front of him. And he comes up, bangs on my window. He's like, get out of the car. And he walks me back to my piss. Oh. And he's like, is that yours? And I was just like, all right. Come on. Yeah. So, God. and actually, it's, it's like in New York at that time, this was back during the days of like when... They're called quality of life crimes. Giuliani had made those kind of crimes heavier. Oh. 
because what they usually did was they see by, by arresting me that then they could search me and they could do all sorts of things. And the way it kind of worked was uh, that they were trying to clean up New York by busting people for little crimes and then taking it to the top. Right. And so that's why I got kind of swept up. Luckily, as I said, I was clean as a whistle except for a full bladder. So <laughs> Wow. That's going to be the thing that gets me arrested is road trips and having to pee in the woods. Yes, right. Exactly. I like this, sister. Yep. I like this. Today I was like, John, pull over. I'm like, you don't need to go down and <laughs> pull over. I, I know. Yeah, you, know, you open like both doors. <laughs> you learn how to just, when you're on the road, you just learn how to make it happen. I know. There was a really funny, there was a time when I was in, so Toad, Jessica's dog, rides in the front seat of the car. He has he has co-pilot status. I have to sit in the back seat whenever I ride with Jessica. I like but that. I was I, I was in the car with Jess and I had to pee really bad. And so I was peeing in a large big gulp cup from 7 Eleven oh. in the back of her car. Oh yeah. And I just remember Jess going, We are really friends now. Oh. <laughs> no, that was when we got vaccinated. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We were in line to get back, and he's like, I got to pee. And I'm like, oh, God, just pee in the car. <laughs> well, I'm impressed you gotta... by both of you. I'm impressed that you can pee in a moving car, even in a big gulp thing. <laughs> and I'm impressed that you kept the car steady. Well, you know what? Really fast, because I know you got to get make your date. Um, get your date. Um, on the subject of bodily functions, you know, I kind of knew I really loved John when – so. Oh boy. I was um you know in New York you find stuff on in New York City you just oh. find stuff on on the street corners and stuff. Yeah. This really cool kind of shiffer robe kind of thing <laughs> and I was like this is so cool I'm going to take it but I need help John and so I got John to um help me carry it and so you can't see you know I've got it like one end he's got the other and we're walking and and we're got to maneuver it up over the curb and he's like okay walk this way this way now step on the curb now walk one step. Now step back down off the curb. I'm like, why am I doing that? I step on, off the curb in a big pile of dog shit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you fucking asshole. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I think at that moment I realized, oh, if I stick with this guy, I will last my entire life. Step in a lot of dog shit. <laughs> it was so funny. I was listening to when you, when you were talking about being in the river and like seeing her Toby walk across it. Like one of the I thought again, I, because we're picking a date for me tonight, like my mind is in relationships. I was dating this woman years ago and we went on a tiny little, I know we went on a tiny little, like single kayak, single person kayak trip. So I was in my kayak, she was in hers and we were going down the river and we'd been dating for about six months. And I was trying to figure out, are we going to stay together? Are we not? Like, I don't know. And it was this beautiful summer day and I was my kayak was just doing lazy circles and I was just looking at the birds and looking at the trees and the wonder of nature. And I realized like I looked up ahead of me and she was almost out of my sight. She was like almost like a quarter of a mile away, just fully going as fast as she could. And I was like, Oh, this is never going to work. out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good metaphor. At least you got that metaphor done quick. Yeah. So that's a big pool of people to. A, a I know. So pieces yeah. are very tiny. We've had we've had the contest open for about six weeks. I had to cut all these up today. The first time I did this, I did my first podcast in two thousand eight. I did this once before, and I had one entry. Ah, <laughs> well, you've come a long way, baby. Yeah, Look you at that. Have I have. A long <laughs> way. That's a lot of kayaks. I know. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so nervous. So yeah, we're flying the winner either. We fly him to them or they fly here to us and we pay for whatever hotel and they get to hang out with Tenny for all day. Because Tenny's like a mysterious guy and he's really smart and people just want to pick his brain. And that's not always possible when we do our big events. So this way they'll get like access to him for a whole day. That Very is beautiful. Cool. And, and um, I get to go on a date for the first time in over a year. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. Fantastic. That's going to be cool. And then before... The big I hope that your dates. Oh my god, cute! I love it. You got a weird. Oh my god, that's us. I love it. That's so sick. I'm so honored. I, I don't. You probably. Layer shirt on. All right. Oh, you've, got, <laughs> you've 
so one of the things like with what's up weirdo and like my lecture, my website is weird lectures and I always call everybody weirdos. And I like to say this at least once during my lectures, and this is a good opportunity to talk about this now. So like most people don't realize that the word, the weirdo, the etymology of the word weirdo, it comes from the 14th century and it's W Y R D is how it was originally spelled. And it literally means the word W-Y-R-D. It means those people who manifest their own destiny. And so, like, I love that my whole life I was called a weirdo and people didn't realize they were giving me, like, the greatest fucking compliment they could have ever given me. That I'm a person who makes my own destiny. I'm with you. That is awesome. Like the weird sisters in in the Scottish play? Yeah, it means the fates. It means the, the destinies. Yeah. Oh, I love, I love the weird sisters. That's really cool. That's us. Yeah. Yeah. You ready to pick, Jess? I don't know, I guess. It's after nine. I gotta go to the bathroom first. Okay, you can go to the bathroom. Okay. All right. Were you now, say- uh, Adam's family, you can't leave me alone on here. No, we wouldn't leave you alone. Okay, one second. Well, Jess runs off. You know, we saw... Oh, no, go ahead, Jess. I was okay. going to say, oh, you run off. <laughs> Oh, look at Toad. Oh. Toad loves you so much. <laughs> um, we, When John and I were in uh, Marfa, Texas, we saw the Marfa lights. Awesome. Amazing. Amazing. We were there twice, and once we saw them. And one of the reasons that we even stopped was because, uh, like like I was saying before, we we do a lot of camping. And this was early on in our relationship, and we, we had read about Big Bend, and we were like, let's go to Big Bend. We camp in Big Bend. So off we go to Big Bend, get in a car, rental car, driving through Marfa at night. And outside of town, we pass all these people sitting on the hood of their car. And we pass them. And I'm like, I I have got to turn around and find out what is going on here. Like, that was just too weird. All these people drinking beer in the middle of nowhere. So we turn back around. I roll in with these people. And I get out and I'm saying, uh, hey, Sorry to bother everybody. It looks like you're having a great time, but what are y'all doing out here? <laughs> like you're all sitting facing the darkness. And they're like, we're waiting for the Marfa lights. And I was like, yeah, oh, okay. I look out there. It was pure blackness. I'm get back in the car and I'm like, just a bunch of nuts. So we take off, do our camping trip for two weeks, come back. And Toby's like, let's go back to that Marfa lights place. And so we go back to the Marfa Lights place, pull in, sit there, and there they arrived, the Marfa Lights. And they were incredible. Have you seen them? I have seen them. It's really? very, very strange. Yeah. They just, out of that one kind of mountain, they cruise across the sky and then they disappear. And it's just really magic. Yeah. And that's the thing, again, we were talking about earlier. Like, that's the thing, like, I can listen to all of the people who can explain the Marfa lights as headlights Mm -hmm. being reflected off of low environmental surfaces and atmosphere. But the other thing is too, is like the world is just filled with wonder. Like I don't even really understand how I'm seeing anything. Like when I just like look across the room, I don't really understand that's magic in in and of itself that I'm not even seeing it. Like I'm not looking at my screen right now. There's just light bouncing into my eye and my brain is interpreting shape and shade and shadow into a form. Like, All of that is magic. So I will take the Marfa lights. We have in Michigan, we have the Paulding light, which is a big light that comes up over a mountain. And I mean, just take those moments of simple magic of seeing something wondrous or stumbling across a coincidence and synchronicity that doesn't make any sense and shouldn't happen that way. Like, I'll take it. Yeah. And I love the idea that we're all spinning through eternity. And then there's a whole bunch of us sitting on the hood of a car watching these fucking lights. Yeah. middle of eternity. Yeah. And, and, and how many people won't ever in their whole lives and have never, and will never because they're gone now, like have never done anything weird like that. Like take a moment and be weird, like do some weird stuff. We had another funny one. We were in Carcassonne, 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 France, this, this cool old castle. So we want to make a movie that's kind of set in like real medieval times about, about magic again. And, um, So Toby found us all these kind of like old abandoned castles that we should go look at in Europe. And so we were over there looking at these castles and one of them was Carcassonne and we had been in it all day and it was super beautiful, really cool. And on the way down, it was night and we were walking 
down the mountain and I look up and this string of lights was coming across the sky. And I was like, what the hell? And we watched it. And this French lady came racing down. She was like, oh! Oh, what is that? What is that? Oh my God! Do you see? Take a video. She's like, Oh my God! It's, ah. And I was like, Lady, you know, it's, yeah, I, was like, I, was like, I was like, Get the fuck off of me! First of all, <laughs> I like you and all, but yeah, my wife's gonna punch you. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, so it was really weird. And then because she was so nervous, this lady and she she was like trying to manhandle me into filming it, and I was I was it was like this really tense situation, and I so I never got the footage of the, this cool ass thing but we went home and we typed in like string of lights across the sky and it turned out non-magically that it was elon musk's like starlink yes yes, yes. yeah but the yeah. site was pretty outrageous we were kind of gobsmacked at first it was like what the hell is that yeah you're watching stuff in space it was it was a moment where, like, it, for a moment there, it was like, wow, you know, this could be the end moment. This might yeah. be the end moment. Cause, and, you know, and it was it was kind of a nice feeling. I was with you at this beautiful castle. I was like, well, the kids aren't here, but this is a good last moment. Aww. Yeah, it magical out, moments. You know, just Elon Musk flying around. Yeah, I was driving through uh, New Mexico years ago. This is probably 25 years ago. Uh, headed toward Roswell, and I stopped at this place. There had been a UFO sighting in New Mexico, in Socorro, New Mexico. Lonnie Zamora was a police officer. He saw a UFO. And uh, I stopped at the location where he saw this UFO, and I was just kind of taking pictures and being like, oh, this is kind of cool. And then I drove another maybe like mile, and all of a sudden I saw all these white dots out in the distance. And I was like, what are those white dots? Like, that doesn't look natural. So I turned down a side dirt road and started driving out into the desert and i realized like obviously years later they had been built but a mile away from where this police officer saw a ufo is the very large antenna array in mexico huh. which are all those enormous like radar dishes that you see in the movie contact mm -hmm. like they for some reason the best place to build them was in new mexico in this place where 30 years wow. earlier a guy had seen ufos and i was like this is normal but magical <laughs> that's cool we stayed near in a campground not far from roswell and it felt pretty weird like in a in a, not in a good word weird way it, i mean it, it felt it felt well, like that one was dangerous i think right no it just remember it just felt yeah. extremely we it's just like the hairs of of were always like hackled you know behind my it just it felt very um trippy and i i couldn't quite put my finger on it and i'm not even sure we stuck around i think i put my finger on it that i felt like it was dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I thought of one more question while I was in the bathroom. I remember people were bothering you about it too when it came out. And I know it's annoying because people ask us for shit too, but are you going to make Hellbender shirts or merch or anything? We have some Hellbender oh. stuff. Yeah. You have shirts? We do. We have a site. Um, what the fuck? On, yeah, we have like a Hellbender, like the band site, but the with the E's or sixes. So Hellbender, but all these are sixes. Hellbender.com. Yeah. We have Hellbender shirts. Um, and meat shirts. And meat shirts. Oh yeah, the meat shirt. But I'll tell you what, and you stickers. just when we you just shoot us your your address and we'll send you some. You no, know, I want to buy it. Don't no, go. I gotta buy it. I gotta support friends. Gotta well, support friends. We, we we'd love to send you some. Um, and the meat shirts are funny because nobody likes the meat shirt. Like <laughs> like I love wearing the meat shirt because. Vegetarians don't like it. Meat eaters don't like it. Every like it's like nobody. Everyone looks at you like, "What's your problem?" You know, <laughs> it's, like, it's just so funny because first of all, it's about the movie, so that's what yeah. the problem is. But it's also just a word, yeah, that's funnily divisive. Yes, like, yeah, it's humorous because it really doesn't. It's just it's just this funny word, meat. <laughs> yeah. I know in the movie you think that guy's going to be an asshole. You're like, here he fucking goes. And then he just talks about the shirt. And you're like, what? Oh, you know what? You're the first person who's ever brought up that. And it was so important to us. Really? <laughs> yes. Because we wanted to have, you know, the authority figure. Yes. And, we, and, you know, it's like, 
we wanted to have that moment of tension of mm -hmm. like, oh, and everyone knows where this is going to go because mm -hmm. everybody's been pulled over by the, you know, everyone's gotten lectured by a ranger and pulled over by a policeman. So they know where everything's going. And yes. so what was so fun and you are the, it's amazing that you're the first person to mention it because it was really important to us to just bring the whole audience to this one spot and then go, <laughs> yeah. now we're talk about rock and roll in this t-shirt yes. you know it's and he's 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 a great friend of ours sean the actor um is basically uh our our kid's second father um he helped raise yeah. our kids so he's a sweetheart he's also in the film we did before hellbender called the deeper you dig and he's yeah. he's a really cool role in that yeah that he's, movie was a lot darker i felt like i mean this movie's dark but that one i was like this one feels like chilly and dark and scary. It is dark. Yeah. We wanted Hellbender to have a more elements of fun. Um, like yeah. we loved like to us, dark is funny, but I think it's not as funny to other people as it is to us. And um I get that. We want we wanted people to have a little more funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And in our next movie, in Where the Devil Roams, um, it's definitely like super brutal but it's to us it's quite funny yeah it's not like funny awesome. aha here's another joke mm -hmm. you have to have that kind of i don't know like twisted yeah yeah just like holy crap i can't believe that just happened and <laughs> freaking funny you know it's like, <laughs> you know sounds funny. right up my alley good yeah Love it. i mean i find myself laughing at you know, the wrong things. I'm the guy who laughs when something treacherous happens and everyone looks at him like, oh my God, what's his problem? I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, it's not funny because I, the pain isn't what's funny. It's just this circumstance is fucking funny. Yeah. yeah. Did, yeah. You guys, did you guys watch Terrifier 2? <laughs> no. Speaking of Horror Hound, that's where I first saw Terrifier was at Horror oh Hound. God. Yeah. Just that's, like not funny, but you have to laugh because it's the most screwed up thing you've ever seen in your life. Right. That exactly right. That's the thing. That's funny. You know, that it is, is funny. funny. The sadness was like that. I laughed my way through the sadness. And but people didn't think that was funny. No. <laughs> <laughs> Another really brutal film that I had to kind of laugh a little nervously <laughs> during was Megalomaniac. Oh my God. Yeah. I didn't that's, watch that. I haven't seen it. I'm not sure it's out yet. We saw it at Tell Tell Ride. Ride Horror, Horror Show. Oh, shit. Um, it's really good. Megalomaniac. Megalomaniac. Did you guys watch A Wounded Fawn? Yeah. God, wasn't it so good? Yeah, it was really cool. I saw that at Tell Ride as well. So good. Yeah. Yeah. I like that was so magical. We love The Innocence. Have you seen the movie The Innocence? I haven't. It's from Norway? From last year, yeah. From, from Norway. Norway? Wow. Is what? that with the kids? Mm -hmm. Yes. I didn't watch that yet. They have like powers. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you That's might not like, good. like you might, there's an animal that, that. No. A not funny thing happens Thanks to for the heads up. A funny, not funny thing. So Thanks just a little heads, heads up. up. <laughs> I just keep thinking about the Polish, Polish accountant <laughs> who jumps, who jumps <laughs> from the building. Is that it? Yeah. I just love the accountant part. <laughs> I just think that's so. It's yeah, she said that I had only been, that was my only, my first human incarnation. And before that, I had only ever been a cobra. <gasps> wow. A cobra? I was a cobra. That's pretty badass. Jesus. Spitting poison in people's faces. Yeah. Cobra and then a Polish accountant who killed himself and now me. That's like what you, what you did to Jessica the first time you met her. You spit some poison in her. I know he did. <laughs> it is true. He continues to do it's that for our whole friendship. <laughs> just you me. know what? You just made me think of a great movie idea. What? That somebody goes to their a palm reading, mm -hmm. or or a or a you know a, a regressionist, a fortune teller, a regressionist, and they say. You're a Pol you were a Polish accountant that jumped out of a window in 19, you know, in the 50s and in Detroit. And you go and you look up and you find the article about who you were. And then you go and you study and you get integrated into the family of who you've been reincarnated. And but it's not good. 
Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's fun. Cause you're not, yeah. you're not blood anymore. You're right. Now you're coming unblood. Yeah. Back to your blood. So it's spiritual and, and, but not blood. Mm, yeah. Lots of good stuff there. I like interesting. it. Yeah. I like it. Love it. I don't know what it would be called. Um, Who I was. No, that's not bad enough. Regression. <laughs> we got to come up with something really. Degeneration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's kind of actually pretty fucking great. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. We have to pick our winner now. All right. Adam family. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. This is amazing. You guys so are amazing. Peace. Thank you. Really nice to meet both us. of you. And yeah, pleasure, pleasure. Uh, I'm sure we'll see you at a horror con. We'll work out. We're not that far from upstate New York either. We'll take a road trip. We'll have some drinks. Please let us know. Yeah, let us know. We got a fun, we got a fun house for you to hang out with, and and we got people we need to kill in our movies. Yeah. Awesome. And you have and you have musical equipment. Yes, we we do. That's right. Yeah. That's some good stuff. You guys, thanks a lot. Have a great night. No, Thanks thank so you so much. Bye. 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 Oh my god, I love them. The best. The best. Everybody loves them. Everybody loves them. Oh my goodness gracious. Should I take a bathroom break before? Probably. All right. Yeah. Vamp. I am. Thanks, Derek. I've said this on the podcast before, but I was voted in high school most likely to have a talk show. I really like asking people questions. Mm, you guys hung out all this time to see who the winner's going to be. I'm so fucking excited. I don't know who it's going to be. A lot of people have entered a lot of times. I feel like if it's not one of the people that entered a million times, they're going to be so sad. Well, like, I might send some presents in the mail to some people that... um entered a lot of times because they feel like they deserve it some people really went ham and two if we haven't said this already we are going to do another one later in the year that'll be like my contest scary um but i can't fly with toad so the per the winner will have to fly to detroit so technically tenny would probably be on mine too because we'll probably just hang out all day and stuff so we'll do another one later John Date, John Date, John Date. Oh my God, we're so effing excited. Jess is good at interviewing. Thanks. Oh. They're seriously just as cool as I literally knew they would be. I yes. Already, I already knew. Yes. Do we have a drum roll? Do we have music? I know what I was thinking. Can you get the music from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Uh, from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yeah, the one that goes, da, 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 da. you know. Uh, you don't have I... to. I'm just saying. This is the moment, you guys. This is the fucking mom. This is it. This is it. And oh, okay. Here's another thing. I wanted to give the person who wins an opportunity to come on the screen and fucking react to the win. So if I call your fucking name and you're home and you want to be on screen. DM me or how do they do it? I don't uh, have the link. I don't have the link for this chat. Oh no, yeah, I do. DM yeah, me. On, listen, you DM me it. on Instagram if you want to come on here and react to your win, and I will send you the link, and then you can come on here on and react. If you don't want to be on the camera, I fully understand you don't have to, but I think it would be funny if somebody was like, came on here and told us what your date idea was gonna be. You don't have to, I'm just saying. Are you looking for music? I, I am. I'm trying to find them at who wants to be a millionaire music. I don't know if I can find it in time. It's really not like a song. It's just like a sound. You guys know what uh, I'm Let me see if I can, what I can do here. Oh, also the winner gets a gift basket from Old Town Roasting Coffee gift basket. Is this it? Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'll start again. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I have to get this comment off the screen. Hang on. <laughs> All right. Can people hear that? Wait, look in the comments. Can people hear that music? Can you guys hear the 
fucking who wants to be millionaire music <laughs> and everybody's laughing. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'm going to make a noodle! Oh god. Oh god! Wait, somebody flew out! Hang on. Hey! Oh god. There I'm it is. Ready. I'm not ready yet. Do one more time. I'm still Oh my mixing. god. Seriously? I'm still mixing. Yeah, one more time. Okay, I have a name. Oh god, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. I can't look at it. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Wait, literally. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. It's, it's fucking blank. There's what? No, you no... picked a blank one? That's not right. <laughs> There's nobody on the front of the van. That's not right. Come on, start again. <laughs> Cassie Williams. Cassie Williams. Cassie Williams, you're the winner. Cassie Williams has I'm... won the date with John Denny. Cassie Williams. That's you. <laughs> I feel like this person mentioned a lot of times. Oh I'm so excited for them. Everybody's so excited, you guys are so nice. Okay, I'm gonna keep this out. Cassie keep Williams. Out. If you're in the if you're watching, DM me on Instagram and I'll invite you on the screen. I wonder where they live. I have no idea where they live. I have no idea. We don't even know where you're going. I don't does know where it, I'm going. Does anybody know where Cassie Williams lives? I don't have any DMs yet. Oh my god, no, no wait. I have a date. I can't believe it. That's me. Here we go. Sending them the link. I have a date. You have a date. I have a date. Oh my God. I'm so excited for them. Where are you going? Okay. They definitely DM'd me back, but I can't tell from their Instagram. Oh, wait. Cass, you want, that's you. <laughs> what are you looking at? Oh. What on earth? We're waiting for a winner. Are they here yet? Cassie <laughs> William from Winnipeg. John E. Altenny. Why not? <laughs> Mm, hang on. Oh my goodness gracious. Come on, you can't leave an empty airspace oh, like this. She's right there. Let her in. What? what? Let her in. Badoom, boom. Hi. You gotta unmute your There you go. Right there. Let her in. <laughs> You won. <laughs> Hi. Uh, you might have to turn your TV off or we're going to get an echo. Or you your mute your, your TV. Oh, I know. Hang on. Let me mute my TV. <laughs> there we go. Oh, my God. Cassie, I'm so excited. You, you guys have no idea. <laughs> oh, my God. We're going I'm on like, a date. I'm sure. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. No Thank idea. you. This is crazy. Are you so You don't excited? have to give specifics, but where am I going to? Or are you coming here? Or have you decided? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my TV is being, everything is being slow. It's fine. It's okay. Um, 
I think I'm going to come to you because I want to hang out with Jess and Toad. Yay. I, I figured people would want to do that. I love it. I get to hang too. Two. Yeah. <laughs> um, and my daughter wants to come too. So. Yeah. We'll figure it out. This is so exciting. This is exciting. Did you, you didn't even, you didn't think you were going to win, did you? I feel like you're one of those I people. never win like anything. So this is awesome. Yeah, I could feel those vibes that you don't think you ever win anything. Just waiting for a sound to catch up. <laughs> oh, um, since everybody's watching. What? We hold it up to the screen closer. She's making a cross stitch of me and Toad and Bean. That's amazing. I know. Yeah. Hang on. We'll see. Let me get Bean. I will tell you, coming on a date and coming here. Like you're you're in my system. I know where to go. I know what to do. Yeah, we'll bring you to all the fun places. Yes. This is so, so crazy. We'll work I out. Really, all... Listen, I really thought a guy was gonna win. That sounds perfect. I thought a guy was gonna win too. I know. I was wrong. I really can't believe the first piece I picked has nobody on it. Who is that supposed to be? It was meant to be. It was meant to be. So excited. Now we just have to do all the logistics. I cannot to wait to call my daughter and tell her we got to meet you guys in Wisconsin at Dana's um, event. So she's going to freak. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I know. Now you get us all to yourself. I can't believe that we even did it in the first place. I know. Now I'm excited. I know. I can't believe we know. I'm like, well, I, I will let you guys go because my phone is so weird. Okay. Okay. We'll figure this out soon because I know you have work and you have to figure it out. We'll see you soon, Cassie. Congratulations. Thank you guys so much. No, thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Cassie stitched this into existence. I know for real. That's like magic. She's been working <laughs> on that cross stitch for months. Oh my god. There ain't no runners up in this. No, I wish there was. Just wanted to do runners up and I said no. I did. I wanted to do a second place and he said no. I said no. I know. It is heartwarming. I'm excited. I know this whole night is so heartwarming. Oh, yeah. And then the Old Town Roasting Prize Pack. Cute. Can I re here, can I rep from Old Town Roasting come too? And yup, sure you can. Yup, of course. Come hang out. Do -do 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 -do. I just got so hungry. There's been a pizza sitting the whole time in my like, 15 feet away from me. And I've just been mm -hmm. waiting until 10 because I'm going to go and smash it before any kind of after show. Yeah, we need to do an after show. We're going to do a Patreon only after show after this. Um, and that'll be. Tenny's going on a date. Tenny's going on a date. I guess I'm going to. <laughs> and Toad. And Toad. Toad's going on a date. We all have to go. Michigan's going to be late. I know. I wish we could do a runner up. I know. We'll have to figure out all the logistics with Cassie because maybe she wants to hang with a bunch of Michigan people. Yeah. Yeah, that would you be You know what I mean? Cute. Yeah, we could hang out with her all day and then do like a night hang with like other people. Or we, she could have a date with John Tenney. Then she could hang out with John Tenney, Jess, and Toad. Yeah, then I'll come later. Then she could hang out with all the Michigan weirdos. Yeah. 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 The last time I went on a date was over a year ago. Hmm. This is so exciting. 
Very exciting. What, um, I want to pick another name for something. <laughs> you can't pick another name for something. Can't they have something? Do you have any paintings laying around? <sighs> like a monster painting? Okay, Vamp, if I look, I'll look and see if I have a monster painting. Okay, I'm going to mix the bowl around in my hand, just in case you have a monster painting. I just want to pick another winner. I want to pick a runner-up to get a tiny painting or something. And we have, like, Old Town Roasting Bags. We can have a runner-up, right? I just like swishing all these names around. I want to pick another one. Nobody can tell me what to do. I make the rules. I didn't cut all these up for nothing. I want to do another one. He's got to have another painting. There are no rules here. Exactly. I know. There's no rules. More millionaire music. I know that song's going to be in my head for the rest of my life. Pick two runner-ups to have them go out together. <laughs> That's funny. Two runners up have to meet up with each other in the middle of the country. Pick the, the you drop a pin and you have to meet there. The only rule is there are no rules. That's from fucking Little Caesars Little Caesars commercial. He's like, there's no rules. That's my favorite commercial. Still swishing them around. Who's going to be the runner-up? He better find a painting. I don't like being on here by myself. Toad, help me. Toad. Hang on. Toad. Mm. Did you find a painting? Drawings? You're muted, bro. I have two monster drawings, bro. So I get to pick two more? You can pick two more. This is for this one. This okay. monster drawing here. Ready? Hang on. Wait. Wait a second. Wait a Wait. second. <laughs> for the monster drawing, not the date. This is for the monster drawing, not the date. Rob Boric. Rob Boric. DM us on Instagram to get your monster. Rob, there you go. You got a monster drawing. You got a monster. There it is, right there. Okay. All right, this is for the second monster drawing. What does that word say? It says you can be anybody you want to be. And then That's it's got a monster on there. You ready? Yep. This is for the second monster drawing. Second monster drawing. Here we go. Just loves giving stuff away. Oh shit! Christopher Borgman. Christopher Borgman. It's okay, a monster so the two drawing. runners up were guys. The winner was a lady. There you go. That's the way it should be, I think. Yep. Okay, cute. I there feel better go. now. You feel better now giving away two more things? I do. I just wanted to give more stuff. I'll give them both a coffee too. We have old time roasting for them too. Do the loo do do. Bam blah bam bam bam. What good well, there you go, buddy. We did it. We did it. We kept such good time on this show too. Did we? Yeah, there's only like 17 minutes left. Well, what are you gonna do for the next 17 minutes? You're looking at it. This is it? <laughs> Yeah, well, you don't have any guests left. Well, there's guests, but whether they call in or not, the last 17 minutes is up to them. <laughs> we have asked more people. Will they show up? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. It's all so they fun. I haven't seen Chad in a while. Also, thank you to everybody that entered and supported the podcast. And Thank you, everyone. You can get new equipment. Everything will look better coming shortly. Sound Just better. Just can get a microphone. I can get a microphone. <laughs> Just play the music on a loop for 17 minutes. That's funny. Coffee, auction up a haunted object. Everybody's so nice. Everybody's congratulating the winners. That's so nice. Yeah, where is Adam Barry when we need him? He said he's going to come on the after show. Oh. I'm hungry. This is so fun. <clears throat> No, thank. I really do want to thank everyone for entering. It helps out not only us, but it helps out pups and kittens. 
I know. And make donations to Toadie's Rescue and his rescuer's new rescue. Oh, wait. Tenny, tell us about your perfect date. What do you mean, my perfect date? The one that's gonna happen? Just your idea of a perfect date. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I've had a lot of what I thought were perfect dates, but it's always been, like, person-specific. I mean, I've had traditionally kind of perfect dates, picking someone up at their house, a little bit of chit-chat, go do something fun, a museum or the zoo. Go do something else that's kind of fun, sightseeing, then a little bit of food. You know, a typical kind of perfect date. But then I've also had per- I've also had perfect dates, like I've said before, I think on the podcast, like going to the grocery store with someone. Yeah, you love that shit. I do love that shit. I have a late breaking news. Uh-oh, what's your late breaking news? A secret donor... Yes. Wants us to pick another person and they will pay for them to have a day pass to Michigan Paracon. What? Yeah. So what is this for? This is for whoever gets picked right now. Wait a you second. Will, you will get a free day pass to Michigan Paracon. Wait a second. I'm trying to figure out how to, I want to do a banner, but I have to take Melissa's thing off. I don't know where that is. You clicked on it. Wait, hang on. Hide current comment. There you go. There you go. So what's this one for? A day pass to Michigan Paracon. Okay, hold on a second. A day pass? Yep. To Michigan Paracon. All right, hold on. Here we go. Ready? Yep. (laughs) Where's the music? (laughs) Wait, wait, wait. Already got somebody. Wait. Frisk off. Something. Frisk off. I don't know. There you go. They got to contact us. Got to contact us now. Everybody just DM me on Twitter or Instagram. Get your prize. We have so many prices. Okay, so the first one is the date. The two, second two are for drawings, and the third one is for... Fourth one is for Paracon. That's well, a lot yeah. of prizes. Uh, that's four prizes. There was only supposed to be one. I know. I'm, t- I'm addicted. Just wants to give away more prizes, but she I can't. I do. Like, they're loving love. What do you have of yours that you can give away? I don't know. I <laughs> don't don't give away Toad. I'm not giving away Toad. Well, I said, what do you have to give away? And then you turn the camera to Toad. I just wanted them to say hi. Jeez. Just as Santa. I know I am. She likes giving away prizes. I do. I'm going to give away prizes at my Michigan Paracon next year, too. Are you? Do you know yeah. what you're going to talk about for an hour? Don't worry about it. On stage by yourself? Don't worry about it. Wait. it's so dumb i just want to do all the contests and giveaways you just want to you just want everyone that entered to get something i do i know you do i do too but that's not how a contest works You literally just auctioned off your friend. Can't you be happy with that? <laughs> you need a t-shirt cannon. I do. My goodness gracious. All right. So now, wait, what? What? 
Well, we're going to do Patreon only after show. Patreon.com slash what's up weirdo. Yes. <laughs> listen, listen carefully. There's going to be two links in there. The first link is if you just want to watch along. The second link is going to be if you want to join us on the screen and ask a question. So don't click the wrong link or your self in your pajamas with no makeup on. It's going to pop up on the screen. And no uh, balls and dicks and vaginas and tits. Yeah, don't flash us. You can, show your, you can show your pets, though, for sure. Nobody oh, wants somebody, to see pets. Wait, listen, somebody wants to paint. Listen, somebody wants a paint only drawing in that one. I didn't separate them. They're on the bowl. Yeah, she can't separate those. She no, mixed I would them have all to keep painting until we got a paint. Mm. Yeah, so in the after show, Chris is asking. Yeah, you can come and ask a question on the screen. You can't stay there forever, but if you want to come on the screen and ask a question, cool. If it gets a little, when we were doing them the way we were doing them last time, it was a little chaotic. <laughs> yeah. And then if you also, you have the, the option to just be watching like people are now and then ask a question in the chat and we'll put your question on the screen and you don't have to show your face on the fucking thing. Right. Right. And we'll be able to save it and I'll put it in the Patreon so people don't yell at me anymore. Nobody's allowed to yell at me. I'm doing my best. You're doing a very good job. I'm going to smash an entire pizza between now and like the, the Patreon only. I think I'm going to order one and then smash it after the Patreon only after show. Yeah. I'm smash your we, face. Don't smash my face. When do we start the Patreon only after show at like 1030? Yeah, yeah. Give me a half an hour. We have to send me the links to the other. Well, I have to set it all up and then I'll send you the links. And you have to save this. And I have to save this. <laughs> I have things to do too. I know. Toad's biting on a bone so loud. Everybody can probably hear it. Do you know how good this sounds right now? God damn it, Rory. Send it over. <laughs> Don't we have virtual Del Taco now? Can't we just transport it Star Trek style? I haven't had Del Taco in a minute. Don't yell at Jessica. She's doing her best. See, fucking listen to the people. I am just doing my best. Trying. Trying. You seeing Debbie there? Where? Debbie wants to give away oh. a crystal box during the page show. Oh, really? Sick. Wait, how do we do how are we gonna do it? You're gonna um I don't Sick. know. Sick. We can do like a trivia question. I don't fucking know. We'll figure we'll it figure out. We'll figure it out, Deb. Cute. Somebody's gonna win a crystal prize. That's fun. Oh. All right. Everybody yes. gets prizes. You got eight minutes left, Jess. Mm. What if all the guests start to flood in right now? And it's over. And then we just got to kick them off in eight minutes. <laughs> Whatever. They're going to come to our after show. You never know. Nobody's going to know. Anybody watch Kindred Spirits? I watched Kindred Spirits. Today. I didn't watch Tenny's episode yet. I watched it. I did. I watched Kindred Spirits. Wait, Debbie said we can draw now or do a Patreon one. Oh, do you want to do another one right now before this ends? It's up to Debbie. It's up to Debbie. Debbie, should we do the crystal box now? To kill time. We're waiting. Watching. Debbie, tell us if we should do it now or during. Okay, now do it now. Hold on. <laughs> okay, this is for a crystal mystery <laughs> box from Debbie Rebergs. Shout out. Oh, Amber Neville. Amber, you won. You Is won that Debbie's Amber? Amber? Box. Yeah. No, Amber. Yep. Amber, Amber you won. won. Amber, you won a crystal box. You won the crystal box. Pew. <laughs> I'm so happy for everybody. I got to keep these straight. 
<laughs> I can't watch it back. Okay, so we got a date winner, two art winners, a Michigan Paracon ticket winner, and a Crystal Box winner. We only thought we yeah. were going to have one. There you go. Look at you. So excited. I love prizes. You love prizes. I love prizes. I love that pizza that's in my living room. Listen, we're going to eat in a second. Everybody's mm -hmm. so nice congratulating the winners in the comments. It's like Everybody is so nice. That's like making my heart really happy. I know. Cute. Cute. Maybe I'll use $20 of the ticket money to get you a red and blue lights for behind you. So you oh don't my look God, so yeah, terrible. Well, I know camera. I like that. First of all, second of all, how do you have it look like that? <laughs> it looks like Suspiria over there. Look at that. Hi, whoa, look at that one. Look at Whoa. You could do that. You're holding out on me, dude. <laughs> I am. That's messed up. Do that a little bit of that, maybe. <laughs> Hmm. So fancy. Chinese lights are rad. Can we win a pizza? <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Yeah. Everyone, I can't even begin to tell you. I know. I love everybody. Best contest ever. We'll do another one. Look at this. There you go. We'll listen to... Because I was worried. Oh, Amber, you get a crystal box. Um, <laughs> I was worried that whoever you went on the date with was going to be far away and that we weren't going to film it at all. And now that they're coming here, I can film it. If you they can. let me. It's up to if, them. If it's up to the winner. You never know. If we go out dancing, how are you going to film that? Because I don't dance and I'll be on the side. All right, whatever. But no, if they don't mind, I'll film some of it. So y'all can see it. What if it's an intimate dinner? Were you going to creep on us from a different table? Are we going to go to Olive Garden? <laughs> Sales, maybe. <laughs> Sales. <laughs> well, if she's coming here, she'll probably, she'll need you to plan the whole date. So you're just That's what I'm saying. That's what I really am excited about. Yeah, you have to plan it. By the way, did you notice that the lights are now changing behind me without me touching anything? No, I didn't notice. Yeah, look at that. I've got it. I'm on fade colors. I really want that. I know you do. Got oh, less than three Amber. minutes, everybody. Oh, Amber. I love this. I love this night. I love this contest. This is a good contest. So oh. emotional. Meanwhile, my father thinks that I'm being sold off into human slave oh. trade. Wait, look at this one. <laughs> I love this. My dad's at home watching the uh, Willie Nelson live DVD I sent him today. Nice. Yeah, look at this. Wait, wait, I lost it. This one, you guys on your date and me just alone on the side. <laughs> 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 that is really funny. That's what it's gonna look like. I okay. would do that. That would be a breadstick in my mouth hole all by myself. <laughs> Just a handful of Alfredo sauce and a breadstick in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can't wait for Anna Berry in the after show. That's right. I can make Jess cry. We can talk about how many people love us and support us and how nice all of our friends are. Come on. How when she starts to feel bad about things, she starts to think about her friends and the hippos. And mm -hmm. Fritz. Let's, get that, let's get that makeup running. Fritz. Um, I use primer and setting spray. I could cry my eyes out right now. I could jump in a lake. <laughs> I would look just like this. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, you you do look like you just jumped in a lake. Uh, but uh, there's a real good everybody. come on, you say your final goodbyes. Shut up. There's a new real good episode. Of, I can't fucking talk. There's a real good moment in our new Patreon video where I roll my eyes at you, but I only roll one. And I'm like, that looks really good. <laughs> it looks real good. 
All right, everybody. Thank you so much for everything. Pates, we'll see you at the after Pate and 1030. You'll get links in the Patreon. Yes. Look for the Patreon after party. Thank you, Tammy from Holly Weird. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Adam's family. Yeah. Such good guests. Thank you, everybody that entered. So wholesome. So wholesome and nice. We love you guys. See you in a half hour. See you in a half hour. You still got nine seconds left. Seven seconds. Bye. (laughs) Oh, my God. Bye. Bye. Ah.